God, why am I clapping oh. cheeks over here? Let's. <laughs> <laughs> like I would have. I would have put those away. If you put, um, if you do the clapping cheeks, it should work now, Charles. I fixed it. <clears throat> no, I'm just permanently stuck clapping cheeks now. <laughs> <laughs> You know, some people have a problem where they clap cheeks too uh, too shortly. You know, <laughs> a lot of people buy medication to clap cheeks as long as you do. Deep where legends are told, our heroes rise so brave and so bold. With Zafar's cunning and Herc's righteous might, they venture forth into the night. Bigfoot Lebowski lurking below, fear shadows dancing wherever they go. Captain Mako sails the seas with fish to be found. Together their fates start to be bound Vicarious ventures Alright, let me know if y'all can see me too On my cell phone cam Are you cosplaying snake now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, well, we gotta make it apropos Last week I was I was Waldo And we'll be we'll be restreaming that again For anybody who's watching this now We're I'm gonna restream the last episode We did a Halloween episode Where I was dressed up like Waldo and I had, I had the glasses, man. I had the, I had the striped hat. I had, I had the Waldo hat. I had everything. So I don't even know if I'm looking at the right cam. There we go. Camera one, camera two. It's like, what's up, you know? Hey, solid snake, Wait. Waldo. So I'll do the recap little, real quick. Uh, I don't know. Before we get to the recap, I've got. Yeah. I mean, I've. Czar has a little thing to say. Czar read the Twitch chat he's gonna say what do, you, what do you mean tiny lizard all the things i do hey all, how great i am at the shovel ball and the biggest fucking epitaph you could give me is the tiny lizard you're how like I'm, I'm, a I'm, dragon amongst uh yeah pretty much dude like amongst the <laughs> lizard people you're like a giant you played shovel ball so you're an athlete so you're like you're like what two let's say you're like 2.75 feet tall instead of two and a half feet tall you're Tall. You're almost you're almost three feet, man. You're almost like the size of a halfling. Zar nice. definitely has point. big lizard energy. <laughs> yeah. Big they don't call energy. him the Zaf for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's bizarre how big he is. All right, Got please continue. Big toffee, but I have a big old tail. You know what I'm saying? You know, mm. fun fact: Dragonborns don't have tails, so don't be chasing that tail. There's nothing to chase. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so you guys ready for uh, Zail Recap? You guys started out of the Yawning Portal. You got an assignment from a guy named Volo who uh, had a missing friend named Floon. He's like a redhead. Uh, you know, it's, he's got no soul. He's got no place in the world. And nobody knows where he went. So he's like, hey, can you find my friend uh, Floon? You guys went on a kind of a wild goose chase through the city. You got helped with a guy with a rickshaw, a little tiefling dude named Rickshaw. He directed you guys down to... Uh, towards the Skewer Dragon, which we're currently at, but along the way you stopped by Zoblob shop and did some shopping. Um, got a stuffed animal, sort of. You know, got your uh, big beholder uh, stuffed animal in the uh, Slash Balloon. You guys then popped it and made it into uh, weird items. And then this time, you guys, uh, last time you guys went into the Skewer Dragon, which is in the Dock Ward of Waterdeep, which is near the, the water there. And you encountered uh, the like the owner of the, the proprietor of the Skewer Dragon, which is a large green dragonborn named Burka. Uh, and she is, uh, she was smitten by Zar and um, she, she and Zar right now are up in the upper right hand screen and they are in the middle of, uh, you know, getting to know each other, so to speak. It's very busy this time of year, but Burka uh, had Herc working behind the bar. <laughs> Herc actually did pretty Stranger. good. <laughs> he did a, he did a performance I was check. Wingman in for old Czar. <laughs> yeah, he had him covered. I think he owes him one here because he basically just you, threw you an apron on. Things, you, you work the bar for me. <laughs> so like, you know, he was over here in the bar area working, and then all of a sudden, you know, as he was exploring, Herc found there was all these crates everywhere. So thinking one of them was a mimic, you know, he's kind of got some PTSD from his history with mimics and uh, 
he attacked this crate and inside the crate was a man and he was looked exactly like where's waldo and waldo asked him to follow him in the back and uh, it seems like everybody in this place seems to respect this guy and he's like there were several people that kind of stood up and were almost ready to like attack or like help out if they needed to and, and waldo was like no no it's cool it's cool so they went in the back here mako followed so we have our um right now we got herc who is our half orc he's right here we got mako uh the lokatha fishman warlock and they're in the back right now and we also have uh ff dixon who is a halfling and he is nestled in between some uh some barrels or something like that he he did a stealth check nailed it so he's nestled away his little halfling self perfectly tucked away in a nice little hiding place he also put on the table of the the bar here there was an item that it, he got from zoblob shop which is like a purple jar that has a uh it has like an eye floating in it, which he can use essentially to do what's called scrying, um, where he can like only see things, but he can't hear them. I'm like real scrying where you can hear, hear or see. Um, he can only see what, or you know what? You know what? You can, I'll, I'll say that since it's different than a normal scrying device, you can see and hear. We'll say that because it's a limited use. So you can only use it um, once per day and it's a limited use. So let's say that you can see and hear with your little floating jar and, um, and then we all, and then, uh, who else am I missing? I got everybody, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So where we left off was this Waldo guy took you guys into the back room here. We're in the kitchen where they're, you know, they got the chef here and everybody's dressed in this festive red and white kind of thing. So Waldo really blend, blended in because he was also wearing stripes of red and white. But then uh, once he brings you guys back, his voice changes from kind of like a, a dweeby sort of like friendly voice to... Uh, this kind of gruff sounding voice and so um what we're gonna do is we're gonna change his icon now and he goes like this and as you guys can see he no longer looks like where's waldo now he looks a little bit more like this kind of badass version of himself here so he's still got his little mug <laughs> can i can i do like a little so this is the previous waldo looks like a nice guy you know he has a little mug in his hand there and then here is this guy who introduced himself as Snake. Snake. This Waldo guy kind of releases this disguised self that he has in himself, and um, he changes into this badass-looking guy. And he says, um, <clears throat> So, I heard that you've been asking around for me. You've been asking around for Waldo. The thing is, my name isn't Waldo. It's Snake. I look back at Mako, and I'm like, have we been looking for a Waldo snake? <laughs> Mako shrugs. <laughs> and then I, just, like, looks confused as well. <laughs> you you don't happen to go by the name uh, Floon Blagmar, do you? Floon. I don't know who that is, but I'll tell you one. When, you, when you, somebody goes looking for Waldo, they must know something. I've been watching you guys. I know exactly where you've been. You went to the awning portal. You had a the shadow sorceress that was with you. She talked to Dernan. She asked for Waldo. She mentioned the red sash. Now why would she mention that? Where are the red sashes? Is I'm sorry, is red sash like a a group of people or are you talking about like an actual red sash? See, the thing is, she used a very specific code word, the red sash, to describe Waldo. And it's not just a code word, it's a code we live by. Our group has been called the Red Sashes. All right. That's a terrible name. You should go by something like Lale Lule Lo or something. <laughs> you leave the naming to me, punk. I've been doing this for a while now. Or like the snake pit, so I'm relevant. <laughs> oh. You might be you might be wondering why they call me Snake. Well, <laughs> I'll tell you. I because I, it's I, sincerely, I no, it's okay. You can keep that to yourself. Whatever <laughs> happens with you in your bedroom time is for you alone. It's none. I mean, sure. I mean, a lot of people might think it's that, but no. It's because uh, you know, the stripes, you know, and. Uh, 
Right, you know, like, snakes, a, like a striped snake. Okay, mm. I get it. Yes. I'm not some kind of solid snake here, okay? I'm a striped snake. <laughs> I'm not a solid colored snake. I got stripes. I got okay. stripes. I broke out of prison. They had me for years. Rick's gonna, like, s- Rick's gonna like slowly start backing up from him. Just like, not, just like, all right, this guy's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a little space here. Where do you think you're going, buddy? I got some questions oh. for you. I, sure. Uh, if there are questions I can answer, I, I <laughs> sincerely know nothing about the Red Sash, though. Okay, well, what were you doing in the Yawning Portal? Having dinner. It's a fucking inn. <laughs> it's a tavern. My, my sources <laughs> say you talk to Volo. <laughs> that guy's always getting into trouble. Sure, he keep bought my me a beer. It, uh, he asked us to help find his friend who went missing around here. Is this the Floon guy? Exactly. Floon, Floon Blackbar, yes. Well, I don't know much about this Floon guy. But I do know about Volo. He's, he's always up to no good. I don't know if I can trust you guys snooping around the city. I saw you investigating the crime scene earlier. What was up with that? Uh, it, it was along the way. The cops seemed like dumb idiots and they wanted help. Okay, so as you guys are having this conversation, um, <laughs> we're going to cut over to Digson, okay? And, um, hold on a second, I got a glitched out thing. So, uh, Digson is hiding in the corner there. Digson, what you can see, Digson, is you're, you're nestled away in this, like, corner here, okay? Yeah. And you're kind of in the back kitchen here in the cellar area. So, what you see, well, there you, you can hear everything that they're saying. Meanwhile, you got a uh, little communication coming in from the your little scrying eye over here, but you also notice out of the corner of your eye that there is a a person who's managed to slip in through the back almost almost so quietly you wouldn't have noticed them had you not been absolutely silent and still yourself. God, there are a lot of Waldos in this bar. So what you see is that there's actually a woman, a young woman who has managed to almost, you don't even see her. She came in so stealthily, but now that she's been, she looks like she's listening to this conversation outside of the door, kind of leaned up with her back against the wall. And then also what you see over here in the bar area, you have your little, uh, you know, it's almost like a little earpiece that you got a little connection with it, but it's, um, mm-hmm. you're listening in. And what you see is there's, there's several of the people that were on the bar earlier are talking. And you can hear them because they're right there. So you see these two individuals over here on the screen. And uh, one of them is the one that was the uh, the self-proclaimed pirate king earlier who was like um, talking with Mako. He's still on top of the table shouting a bunch of stuff about being a king of the pirates and uh, zipping around, spilling his drink a little bit everywhere. And then there's also a large guy over here. Well, I'll show, so first I'll show you the art here. Okay, so we got um, this guy, a happy looking dude. And then we also have this guy. Check those abs. They all got abs for days, okay? And they seem to be talking. And this guy, so like, you know, this guy's like, I'm going to be king of the pirates, blah, 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 blah. And then it's like, you know, he seems to be shouting, but, uh, you know, it seems to be kind of a cover as they're having like a conversation. And um, the, 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 the guy with the ram's horn is like a tiefling guy, this jacked looking tiefling guy. He's like, hey, you think the boss is okay back there? You think we should go check on him? And then the the guy's like, no, nah, man, we got to wait for the signal. And he's like, oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. So you kind of hear them saying that under their breath. You know, he's like, hey, the boss is okay in there? Should we? So that's all you see. So you see the girl up there. And then we're going um, to go to that in a second. But we're going to also uh, cut back to Zar. So Zar is talking with Burka, Burka the bartender, Burka the barkeep. And she is uh, in the table there, and you guys just kind of got settled in. And uh, I do have some artwork for uh, her as well that is updated. So we're going to... Ooh, can you just please send... <laughs> Get rid of that. <laughs> I got Big Burka right here, okay? Burka, so... More like Burke House. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? And yeah, so, she, so she's talking. So you guys are, you guys are talking there, and... Um, you guys just ordered another round of the um, spiced wine from her special collection there, and uh, you guys are you guys are actually a couple drinks in by now, you know, because this, this has been going in. And you guys are you guys are talking and getting to know each other. And uh, Zara, do you want to start off, or do you want me to start off? 
I'll start off. Sure. Look. Look, Burka. Burka. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it might be the spice wine talking at this point, but... Are you married? Oh, wow. You you really don't beat around the bush, do you? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Never been married. In a way, I was married to the sea. You know, oh. you ever, you know, you ever hear that kind of analogy? Anybody drop that on you? Yeah, it's kind of like that. You know, I was real busy. Uh, finally managed to settle down, but it, you know, no, I never really had time. I, I had a crew of people that used to be with me, but I was always so busy, you know, uh, trading on this open sea, you know. It, it was always hard to find time for myself, you know. Even now with the bar, I feel like nobody really notices me anymore, you know. I try really hard, but I just don't feel noticed, you know. They're just, they're just, they're, they're just, look. Beautiful. She blushes. She blushes a little bit. It's also she's been drinking, so (laughs) very. (laughs) Look. Damn, Scott, you land your wife with this riz or what? (laughs) (laughs) She's like, when you came in here with your smooth talking, there were there were literal sparks, man. They don't, they don't notice you because they're intimidated. They, they, if you had eyes in the back of your beautiful head, beautiful eyes in the back of your beautiful head, it's peeking out through is that hair I see peeking out they're, through the hair. They're extensions, but you know, hey, who, who's, who's counting anyway? <laughs> Thank you. She kind of flips her, flips another, her hair. <laughs> I've, I've met ladies with extra sets of eyes. Anyway, if you. <laughs> Shut up, cat. <laughs> the, cat. the cat's like, no. <laughs> Wait, who let that she cat in here? <laughs> she yells at this guy. Hey, I thought I told you no cats allowed in here. Damn it. He's like, he's like, oh, my mistake. My mistake, Burke. I'm so sorry. He kind of leaves you, leaves him alone. Takes the cat away. Okay. You can still hear the cat mewling. <laughs> yeah, in the distance. It's not going to stop. I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, Burke, dear... Burke, dear, why don't you tell me if you could get married to anybody besides the Z, would you would you consider I'm not saying you should I'm not asking a question I'm just asking a hypothetical should a 2 foot 0.75 foot I know you're huge man, for great cobalt ball. I saw that <laughs> yeah I am you're almost 3 feet tall it's amazing <laughs> I you, look a, you look like you, you I <laughs> I, I gotta admit I I do follow shovel ball a little bit and uh I, I I sort of saw you play a game once. You saw me hit it out into the left field on the uh, last inning on uh against none other than uh uh Blicky Ruth. Good old Licky Ruth. Yeah, that guy went didn't have shit versus it, it I always said his his curveball was weak. Yeah, it was the last inning, I remember. But listen here, buddy. I know, I know that sorry, you're a real player, and you know I don't want my heart to be played with. You know, I know that you're uh, all you shovel ball players. You know, always trying to score. But I'm a lady, and uh, we can't be talking about putting the cart before the horse here. I need to be. I like to be uh, wooed. Look, look, Burka. I know I might seem like a player, what with my good looks and all, but I, my heart was broken too many times down in the sewers. Last time I had a lady, I'm not gonna lie, was over three weeks ago. <laughs> Been alone ever since. Wow. How how long do cobalts live for, anyways? <laughs> Six weeks. <laughs> I was gonna say like like it's three weeks long time for the cobalt lifespan, sir. <laughs> Let's say they got they got they got like a normal size normal size lifespan. She's like she's okay. like look at, she's like I'll be real with you. I need a man who can. You can help me out around here. I don't know if you noticed, but the place is a, your friend was right. What was his name? Herc? The half orc guy. I met him Her- an hour ago. Oh, you guys seem like you really know each other a lot. Pretty well for an hour. He just buys me things and works for me. Yeah. Oh, I get it. So he's like your underling. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So I, I have a few of those. Yeah. So it's like you, like you said earlier, the, the place is in shambles. I mean, I tried fixing it up, but the windows are shot. I don't know. Are you are you any good with the repairs? Are you crafty? No. 
Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. So you yes. say you're good with your hands. <laughs> I'm very good with my hands. Oh, nice. See, the, the problem is, I tried fixing this place up a long time ago. I mean, it's, it's sort of, it, like I said, it used to be my ship. It used to be a, a crew, a captain. Berka the Berserka, they called me. I used to, used to be well known around these parts until I got wrapped up in some, some bad business with some pirates. It crashed my ship, drove an anchor through the ass, and now, now it looks what? like this. I tried, I tried making this place something special, something I could be proud of, something our people could be proud of. You know, those dragonborns are real proud people, but those damn guilds, I didn't go through the guilds and they, they've been hampering my business ever since. This is the only time of year I actually am in the black is during the festival, Sea Mains Fair. The rest of the year, you know, we got people like freaking Volo coming in here because it's cheap to drink. It's pathetic. I'd like to spruce this place up, but Volo. I'm in bad standing with the guilds. I don't know what to do. Ask. The Carpenter's Guild, the Builder's what? Guild, what? the Shipwright's Guild. Everything needs a guild. Where I'm from, us Dragonborn, we just make things with our own hands. Right. You see, look, I I didn't I didn't vote for for Rose Lizard either. I'm not into these guilds. Let me help you with a couple windows. It'll look nice. It'll attract a patron or two. And uh, maybe I can help you with the windows upstairs. You know what I'm saying? Put in some. Oh blinds. yeah, those. That that sounds nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, but really, it's like we maybe can't we do anything. Those ones. Now, we, we can fix the place up as much as we want, but this place has got a lot of overhead, and frankly, I can't get a loan, and it, it, if I could just somehow get those guilds to be back in their good favor, I'm, I'm sure I could get this place back up, up and running again. See, the thing is, they blacklist you. I can't get any customers oh. in here. So, the oh. you know, the place, the place could be in great condition, and uh, nobody would come in, so I focus all my effort on excellent customer service and everything. It just doesn't make a difference. It's the damn guilds. So let me let me let me get this straight. If I can get the guilds in good favor with you, I'll be in good favor with the lovely Burke. I knew you were smart. <laughs> See, that's a thing. I need a man who can actually provide for me. And that's that's what I really need to be properly wooed. I'm a very direct well, I know a man. with what I want. I know what I want. And obviously you got the looks, but I need to see if you got the brains. If yeah. you could do that for me, uh, well, we can talk. All right. Give me everything you need in a concise step-by-step -step manner so I can write it Okay. Down. So she, so as you guys do that, you start talking. She starts talking about the various guilds. As I mentioned before, the guilds in the city, they run everything. There's a balance between the masked lords of the city and the guilds. If you want to build something and you don't use the guilds, they basically screw you over. So what she's talking about is true. And she lists out the different various guilds. They all have different locations around the city. And uh, she gives you a full list of all the different various guilds. There's even a guild for, uh, like, Mako, for the fish, the fishmongers uh, something or other. Fish, there's, I like, a fast hall for that. So the guilds run literally everything. But that's that's what kind of balances it out, is there's the nobles with the mask lords. And there's, there's the guilds, who also, there are mask lords that are part of the guilds as well. And mask lords are just people who are in power. So, like, kind of like senators almost, but they're... And I don't, so she she lays that out for you. Well, uh, sorry. Uh, Go ahead. Would, would you equate guilds more to, like, uh, corporations or more to, like, uh, unions? Unions. Okay. Yep. So they kind of broker Corrupt the relationship. Unions. <laughs> well, it's kind of, like, just assumed. <laughs> I think it, it's more of the fact that she is not from around here. And she's not really from like the city, and she doesn't really get that. Xenophobic you have to, union. <laughs> you have to go through. No, there's, there's. I mean, you know, there's the guild. There's the dung sweepers guild, which you used to be part of. Um, they help clean up the streets. That's why the streets are so clean, except for in the dock ward and the field ward, <laughs> which we're currently in the dock ward. So, uh, so she, what she said, they actually, it, it works out fairly well. There's a balance of power, but you definitely, if you don't go through the guilds you definitely get screwed and like it's kind of like just taboo and the word comes around that you're not willing to play ball is the analogy there so i'm gonna let you guys catch up as she starts to tell you about you know you guys start she starts to really 
talk about her dream of reshaping this place and how you could help. And uh, while you guys are doing that, we're going to go back. Is there anything else that you wanted to say real quick before we go back to everybody else? Your hands are rough, just like my mother. You know that? <laughs> Sounds like some psychological oh. stuff, but I'm, I'm not I'm not really reading into it. I, hell yeah. <laughs> She's like, I'm just jealous. She says, I'm just jealous of your tail. Look at the look at the size of that thing. You know, us dragonborns, we don't even have tails. Like, what the hell is up with that? We're supposed to be from dragons. Yeah, you want to touch it? Do I? And as we do that, touch. we are going to... <laughs> the screen is going to change back over. <laughs> to from the dark corner of the, the tavern... <laughs> Back to uh, back to uh, Waldo over here, and uh, Waldo of Waterdeep with his, in, his snake. So I you guys so really need to get some thicker walls in here because if I have to listen to this guy, <laughs> try I mean, to yeah, flirt this gotta... any longer. <laughs> it is kind of thin if you try to like think about the layout of the place, you know. We need to repair it so there could be a dull roar in here. People have some privacy. <laughs> So as he you guys said, she reminded him of his mother. Like, who does that? <laughs> so yeah, uh, so clearly our cobalt friend has great psychological <laughs> issues. My companion, her. Yeah, I so like, as you, you guys are here, to talk with him sometime. I imagine that like you guys awkwardly all stopped as like you're right in the middle of this tense conversation <laughs> where like. Herc, Herc is like backing up from Waldo. He's a little scared and he's like, and there's a lot of tension. And then all of a sudden you just hear like them talk and like, so it's quiet for a second and it's just quiet enough so that you can hear like their private conversation and like talking about the tail and stuff. Oh man. <laughs> Let's clip that for the Twitch channel. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's rough how bad Herc's been striking out with Yagra and this is what's getting... <laughs> <laughs> this is what's getting Zarpai. <laughs> I'm trying to make Kirk look good. <laughs> you set the bar, okay. buddy. So as you as you guys um, are talking, about, so so snake so snake looks over at you guys. Damn the walls! It's like Burke has really got to fix that. You know, it's, it's kind of weird, right? It's like you're eavesdropping, even when you're not. I mean, normally it's a good thing, but in this case, I don't know. I'll be, Maybe we should talk at a lower tone, then, if we're trying to keep this a little bit private. Yeah, yeah it's a good idea. Be, I, have the, I have the ear of a snake. So what, what was this you were saying about the red sashes? So anyways, like I was saying, some people... Hey, they call us uh, vigilantes, right? But we're not just vigilantes. We don't just wait for crimes to happen. We try to stop it at its very root. The real mask villains are those, some of those mask lords, and there's only some that we can trust. Now, I need to know if I can trust you guys going around this city. Are you, are you working for one of the mask lords, or? Uh, no. <laughs> not, not that you know of, anyways. They're sneaky. Like a snake. You, you, you're asking if you can trust us. What do you have to listen. gain from not trusting us? Well, listen here. It seems like you guys are adventurers. I need to know if you're the right type. Because I'll be honest with you. I've got some problems of my own I'm trying to look into. And uh, I could use some help. I, I look back at Mako and like look back at Snake. And I'm like... Well, of course we could help, but uh, our prices aren't cheap, if you know what I'm saying. Mako nods, trying to play along with her, like <laughs> being the little brother, like, all right, we're going to follow through with them. <laughs> yeah, so he looks over at Mako, too, and he's like, you there, what's your name? My name is Mako Tsunami. It's a pleasure to meet you, Snake. Ha <laughs> ha. Let me ask you something, Mako. I heard you talking to my uh, my pirate-loving compatriot. His name is Luffy. And uh, I heard you don't like pirates. Well, why don't you like pirates? For you see, I do not like pirates because they uh, took all my people and uh, imprisoned them and are making them forced to work out in the sea. 
to go and salvage ships deep, very deep. And uh, they can't help defend themselves, and they prey on the weak. That's what I have against pirates versus sailors, Snake. I see. So you do have somewhat of a moral compass. I, I can really relate to you. See, I was a prisoner as I was trying to tell Herc earlier, but before he cut me off. <laughs> but I also escaped from a forced labor camp. That's why I had the stripes. The, the, the stripes of my, my, my slavery. But now I wear them as a badge of honor. Because uh, the red stripes represent the blood that I bled for this city. And the red sash also represents that. I could, uh, I could use a guy who has a good sense of justice joining my group. And yeah, Luffy's, he's a little rough around the edges. He's a little weird. It's a bit of a stretch to say that he's uh, easy to get along with since he loves pirates. But he's got a good heart. And I sense that you do as well. I think he's uh, a bit misguided, but uh, yes. Seems like uh, so. While the or, uh, snake here, <laughs> uh, stripe snake, seems like he's getting a pretty good vibe. And so he kind of looks um, bet between. Like, he looks to Herc. He looks back, and Mayo kind of sizes you guys up and down. And then he kind of radios in to his buddies out there. He goes, "Hey, it's Snake. The coast is clear. You guys can come in." And so then. There's these guys out here, and they, they get the signal from their boss, and they start to come in. Also, this woman... You still have your radio voice on. <laughs> do I? <laughs> hey, there you go. How about now? How about now? There you better. go. You're way better yeah. now. All right, there we, so we come in. <laughs> oh, at least the radio voice worked. All right, so these guys start to come in here, and you see these guys enter, all three of them. And this, this girl, she likes to kind of hide in the shadows. This guy... Kind of comes out to the front, and you got them all in here. And as they all go by, they all don't notice that uh, Dixon is there as well. And uh, he's like, all right, I'd like to introduce you to the other members of the Red Sashes. We got Luffy over here. He uh, wants to be a pirate, but he really just wants to be free. You know, and I'm all about freedom after being a slave. I'm sure you guys can understand. Herc, do you understand what it means to have freedom? More than you know, buddy. See, I sense that about you. You seemed like you've been through a lot of shit. I, uh, I kind of like straighten my coat and I'm like doing it in such a way that I'm like showing off my little manacle. I'm just like, oh, and he's like, yeah, <laughs> see the manacle <laughs> you fought in the Coliseums. Ten long years. Yep. So you're telling me you lasted 10 years in the Coliseum and they let you go free? <laughs> Last, it is a uh, lightweight, but I conquered. Nice. And I like a guy I'm like that who can uh, break himself out of his own. I mean, I did, I did it in a different way, but uh, yeah, arenas of blood are no joke. You must have really have a lot of conviction. I like that. He's like uh, speaking of conviction. You got our our guy over here. Uh, introduce yourself, uh, there, big guy. So this guy. Um, Large, large individual, tiefling kind of, wa he, he walks up to you guys. He's carrying a, a really large crossbow in his hand. Um, and he's just, he's, he seems to like never put it away. He's always just kind of carrying it. Um, and he says, uh, yeah, sure, boss. Uh, my name is, uh, they call me Ram, bro. Because, I don't know, I'm, I got the ram horns, you know, and uh, I, I got a bow, you know. But, uh. You know, my real name here, uh, my real name is Ripcross Havoc Shot. I but you, I'm but sorry, you know, what, what, what was that? Was that Infernal? I, I didn't quite make that out. Ripcross Rip Havoc Shot. Wait. I... Which you I don't know, know if it, I can do that with my vocal I cords. I, I don't know if I'm you just, guys I'm just gonna know. Call yeah, see, that's the thing, right? Is Ripkos is it means Rambo, uh, you know. And I assume you guys don't speak Infernal, you know. So uh, they just call me Rambo. It's cool. I'm I'm like I'm like the barbarian. Yep, pretty simple guy. <laughs> I I like to pick things up, put them down. Sometimes I like to shoot stuff and make it explode, you know. And then <laughs> that's what uh, Herc likes to do. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
You yeah. like to you like to throw it down, or you know you like to have a little fisticuffs every now and then. Put on a little show. Yeah, I can do that. Too and, good. It's, I love it. and then so uh <laughs> then we got waldo so then uh snake is like kasami introduce yourself damn it and she's like <laughs> this girl over here is like in the shadow she's like kind of pulls up to her little scarf so she's also wearing a little scarf so she's also got the little little scarf and you guys recognize her she's actually the girl that you saw earlier when there was the giant statue one of the walking statues of Waterdeep, and uh dixon helped out she was restraining her friend uh yaren um as he was yelling at one of these statues saying i want to kill all you god all you animals i'm gonna slaughter you all and uh and dixon helped out with that he uh he he taught him how to do vicious mockery at these uh giant hundred foot tall statues as she pulled him away so and she's like she says hey yeah i was it was me earlier you might have saw my friend uh yaren yaren ager He's, um, he's always egging on these, these statues. Bad habit of his, but um, kind of blew my cover, I guess. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> so, uh, and now you guys have, have met some of the red sashes. So, uh, as you guys can see, this guy's got a little red sash, and so does uh, Luffy over here. So, you can see, that's a thing. It's a thing. All right. All right. That's a thing. It's a, it's a motif. <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a it's pattern. It's better than naming yourself something like straw hats or something at least sash is more more identifiable so uh, luffy kind of adjusts the straw hat of his he's like I thought it was a good name but nobody ever listens to me <laughs> <laughs> kind of grumbles to himself so you need our help with what exactly well there's a little there's been um some some disappearances lately i don't know if you know i'm not talking about talking about the sharp ear killer the the elf killer? Actually, no. Other disappearances. That's what I was going to say. There's been a lot of sh a lot of stuff going around lately. I mean, got the Sea Maidens Festival going on, and people have been dis dis disappearing. And uh, it's been in, in the field ward, which is on the complete other opposite end of the city. And um, that's where we've been trying to investigate, right? We, we, we were stretched too thin. We got resources down here in the dock wards, but the place is packed because of the festival. Um, but if you're looking for the elf killer, I think Burka may know some something. Ask her about it. She was just saying the other day they should do something about it. So maybe ask her. She might know. Well, it just seems like people are going missing all <laughs> over the place. It's hard to believe that these are all coincidences, right? Yeah, it's crazy. But what's what, what what's been interesting to me lately is uh, we have some contacts up in the um to the northwest of the city or north northeast of the city. Um, you know, there's all these disappearances going on the field wards. We think it's connected. I have a contact that I sent out. I haven't heard from. Um, he's the he's the fifth one. How many is there? One, two, three, four, five. He's the fifth member of the Red Sashes. Someone we sent them out there. Missing. Went out to investigate. Yeah, another missing person, I guess. Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, but his um, here. There's I'll more show people you. missing in this town. Than <laughs> he's pretty than people that aren't missing at this point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's pretty famous. I look around and I'm like. What happened to that shadow sorceress? She seems to have gone missing. Too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we got uh, one of our other group members is missing right now. Fia, is the shadow sorceress. She's the one who first asked about the the red sashes. So that's what he was talking about earlier when he was um, asking about why you guys were asked. You know, he saw you guys were all together. You're all in an adventuring party, and you're asking about the red sashes. So that's what kind of prompted this whole whole thing of a jig. So as he so as he as he says that he shows you um a newspaper and it's it's from the uh, Waterford Water Waterford no that's here that's in Michigan <laughs> the Water Deep uh, <laughs> I would love a Waterford D and D session <laughs> yeah we should be in Waterford sure he shows you guys a, a newspaper clipping of uh it's 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 from a few years ago okay. and it's an old article about these guys who escaped from this island this island that was overrun with these crazy dinosaurs and he shows you this guy right here. He says, we're missing our contact. His name is Roland. Dr. Roland. Roland Muldoon. Oh. And this man, he's uh, one of our best scouters. 
And if he went missing, something must seriously be going on. We sent him to a place called uh, Amon's Farm. It's northeast of the city, just outside the field ward. He was investigating the field ward and something drew him out there. There's something going on. And uh, I want you to to find him because he, he was actually investigating another guy who was missing. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the guy that went missing is a, a honeymaker. His name is uh, Beppis. And Beppis, uh, Beppis went missing and he had this farm. So uh, if you guys wouldn't mind go out checking out what's going on with that. Um, I really appreciate it. And although I can't, can't exactly pay you much in coin. I'll tell you this. If you owe me a favor, that's worth more than its weight in gold. I don't know if you ever heard that phrase before. I made it up myself. Yeah, it's kind of what Davil said, too. You want to get anywhere in the city? I'm an infiltrator. I can get you in there. I can get you in anywhere in the city. What do you say? Mm. Look at Mako for confirmation. By the, way, what's Dixon, by the way, what's Dixon? By the way, what's Dixon doing with, with all that. this? Is Dixon staying in the, uh, uh, in his barrel, or in his like hiding place? I mean, his little hidey hole. Um. Yeah. I'm gonna. I feel like uh, I wait for confirmation of the uh, accepting okay. or not accepting the mission. Okay. So these guys are basically saying, yeah. Yes, I go, I look at Herc, and uh, I say, yeah. I shake my head, and I say, yes, I think we shall do this. All right, so and Dixon emerges from essentially what's like, it's like a wine rack, but it's also got different uh, brews of champagne. And uh, as you do that, as you, as you, so you kind of like emerge out there, um, Ian, yeah. your character, you knock over a bottle of, sh- of champagne, and it kind of like rolls over towards... Uh, towards uh luffy here and so luffy picks it up and he goes ah sweet well let's celebrate then and he pops some champagne and everybody's just kind of like uh rambo's like hey man too soon you know we just met these guys (laughs) and uh but he's like oh come on and he's like uh, and snake's like and rambo's like man you're luck you're lucky that uh that the roland isn't here you know you know what he'd probably say and then uh, then uh Luffy is like, yeah, he'd be like, we were saving that for special occasions. I think this is a good special occasions. These guys are going to help us out. Expanding the, the red sashes. Woo! And uh, while the, I mean, uh, Snake just kind of shakes his head and goes, oh, man. Whatever you do, just don't, don't mention Chalt, the island of Chalt, when you meet uh, Dr. Roland. It's uh, a bit of a touchy subject for him. It, it's ever since he met that Jonathan guy. Damn Jonathan. Damn Jonathan. I'm sure you've all heard of Jarn Jarn Hammond. Famous. Yes, I'm very familiar with this Jarn millionaire. Yes. Damn. <laughs> oh, no, I was sorry. I was, must have been thinking of a different Jonathan. Yeah, I used to have a cane heard. like that. He points over he and he sees the... Oh, who yeah, is the I'm wait, here. who is who is yeah. the cane? Is it her? Actually, he's... <laughs> Is it Ian? I mean, is it yeah. who's who the pimp cane? Do you have the pimp cane? <laughs> oh my god! I got the pimp cane. Yeah, that's that's Jonathan's cane. The hell did you get that? Oh my god! What oh, what yeah, happened to Jonathan? The, what uh, happened to Jonathan? The trinket shop down the road. <laughs> oh, old, old Zablom shop. Huh? I don't know. I've never met this Jonathan. I just I bought this cane. <laughs> oh god, that that can't be good. <laughs> so uh, yeah. He's like, all right, let's so mission accepted then. You do this and maybe we can help each other out. <laughs> all right, not suspicious Fine. at all. Fine, Go we'll on. help you out, but I swear to God, if anybody else asks us to find a missing person, <laughs> we are at capacity for missing people. It's kind of like a domino effect, like those Russian dolls. I mean, like those uh, <laughs> those ra- those Rashman dolls. Hey, is Mako echoing for uh, anybody? Um, Just me? I, I, no? no, not for me. Oh, Sounds okay. Fine to me. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. It might, it might just be you. Be you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't help but feel like we're going about this the wrong way, and that we're we're chasing down missing people, and what we <laughs> should be doing is setting up like a bait trap. 
and just <laughs> f- figure out who is going missing. What is the common connection between them? Find the person that matches that description. Try to get them kidnapped. We follow the kidnappers back. It'd, be, it'd save us so much more time. Not bad. Yeah, you're right. Actually, it makes a lot of sense. I wish we thought of that before. Mako goes and casts my <laughs> illusion and like does like a female voice be like, Oh no, woe is me. I'm a helpless female elf just going through the streets. Nothing bad will happen to me. And then like he initially shuts it off. He's like, I could do a trick. Yes. <laughs> That's a little bit on the nose, but you, you're, you got the right idea. <laughs> okay, so um, as so we're gonna we're gonna so yeah, basically so so, so yeah. snake snake looks at you guys and he's like, no, wait, there, there was, was Floon here before or something? Why were you guys here? Were you looking for him here? Yeah, uh, yes. last place he was seen was here. He got into a bar fight or something, and then went never came home. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'd ask Burke about that too. She's she's always here. I knock on the wall and say, Zar, ask her <laughs> about but, about fluid. So Zar does what? Here. Give me a perception ask her check. About I was. Me? Give me a give me a perception check. Alright. See if you can hear it. Let's see. I still have Sam Neal up on my fucking screen. I'm gonna let's see. Zar? <laughs> yeah. It it, it <laughs> looks a lot like Sam Neal, but not quite, you know. He's riding he's yeah. riding a, a raptor. Or like that's something right. that's like a raptor. It's like a four-legged raptor. Um. <laughs> yeah, he's so you guys kind of know, like, uh, you know, the news. He answered the newspaper article, and he's looking at it. It says like a uh, dino druid saves the day. Uh, dozens left dead or maimed and killed. <laughs> it's like all in one head, uh, all in like one headline and mi- minor sub headline. Fourteen. All right, rolled. So you can hear some muffling there. Like, hey, hurt. So what'd you say, hurt? Uh, I said, Zar, ask her if, if she knows where Floon is. So you just kind of hear. Ask her where her Zar, what is? Ask her where Just kind of hear like a little muffled. Well, Burke, excuse my, excuse, excuse my fucking friend. He seems to be having a potty mouth. What the hell you say, Herc? Floon, so, <laughs> so Burke, Don't Burke talk is like. to a lady like that in front of her. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I, I really, I really need to fix. I really need to fix these wall. Get some insulation or something too. Maybe you can help me with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Later. Uh, let me go check on this guy. He, he seems to have it. We're good, right? I'm gonna. You just like so you're telling her like right? one second you're just gonna step out, or are you are you <laughs> yeah, asking to second. leave? I, yeah, sure. I would. No, I'm gonna go see what this guy's yelling about. I, I gotta go see this guy. Okay, Zerk. He, or he's Zara holding goes on to the my. Night. He's holding on to my thing. I need to go. <laughs> I need to see about a guy. <laughs> so my guy goes. Yeah, you can go. You can move him if you want. Right, how uh, how drunk is Zara right now? <laughs> Probably pretty drunk. <laughs> <laughs> It's stumbling around. So, so you're saying that he is drunk then? Yeah? Yeah, oh, for sure. Okay, all right. So he's a little tipsy. Yeah. All right, you got you got stage one drunkness. Okay. Oh, buddy. Wait, that's a thing in this game? <laughs> sort of. Yeah, the drunk is a condition that you can get where, like, you know, like it affects some of your ability checks, like athletics and things like that. But All right, so Comment this kind of... Charisma. So you kind of stumble your way. So, what right, did, how so does Zara come in? How does Zara come in the room? Describe it. Coming through the back kitchen area, you're stepping through. You see these. You see the scene yeah, of like this guy popping in, a cork. And he's just and... like, "Hey, hey, Herc, man, why, why are you yelling poon through the fucking thing? Look, I'm trying to have a good time. What are you saying? Uh, uh, b- <sighs> you're talking to Burka. He says that Burka knows where Floon Blackbar might be. That's what we're oh. here for. So be sure to <laughs> ask her while you're oh. trying to get busy with her. Okay." <laughs> I just oh. don't want you to lose sight of the whole goal <laughs> of us being here. I'm proud of you. I'm happy for you finally getting whatever you have down there wet. And and I, I want you to just stay focused. For getting God's wet sake. is always good. <laughs> yeah, Mako, you said it. <laughs> in fact, I need to get wet here probably in the next few hours. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh... <laughs> So Lokatha need to keep just to the for viewers at home, okay? Lokatha, <laughs> the fishmen people, every eight hours they need to be bathed in water, otherwise they suffocate. Or whatever. Dry up. 
Yeah. That, <laughs> for the children at home. Yeah. Mommy, I'm confused. Ah, it's a fishman thing. Holy <laughs> on a sandwich. God okay. forbid we ever have Her. to figure out what's going on down there with your fishman parts. I am not a freaky fish guy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we get there. It's all water under the bridge. Once we get there, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. <laughs> Uh, All right. I, I believe Lokath uh, uh, referred to it as swimming upstream. <laughs> Got some strong swimmers in that uh, Lokath uh, here. Anyways, so you All guys right. can continue. So Mako makes the comment about that. <laughs> <laughs> Zara's like stumbling in his fucking position. And he's like, two things. Mako, holy shit. Hark, I'm on it. Bye. <laughs> and Mako looks to her confused like, what's wrong with getting wet, Herc? It, Why doesn't it's... Zar like to get wet? What? Oh, he, he likes getting wet, trust me. Oh, okay, okay. Snake looks at you guys and he's like, I think I think we're done here. Oh, thank God. I'm going to die of embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, so Snake uh, turns back into his regular happy, cheerful Waldo self. And you, they kind of start to head out there. Snake, how do you do that? It's just a little trick. I do a little shimmy and uh, I could teach you sometime, I'm sure. I'm sure there's several things you can learn from, uh, from the red sashes. We have a very particular set of skills. That's all I'll say, Scott. <laughs> skills I've acquired over a very long career. Skills. Maybe, maybe you want to learn the box trick. That's that's some advanced shit. But yeah, he's like, hey, Eric, maybe I can even teach you a, a thing or two about switching between different stealth modes. You know, that sounds like it would be very handy. Yeah. All right, so you guys all, everybody kind of files out. So uh, so Luffy looks over at you, and he's like, Hey, man, sorry about the whole uh, pirates thing. It's not so much that I, uh, I like, it's, it sounds like you've got some real bad history with pirates, but uh, I don't know. Uh, I just want to have my own crew, you know? I want to be a captain. You ever get that feeling like you got to go out in the sea and be a captain of your own ship? All the time, my friend, all the time. Now that passion, I can understand. Oh, yeah, I can understand that passion. Going out on the waves, feeling the breeze in the air, feeling the kick of the ship against the waves. It feels so good. Nothing better than being out free in the ocean. But yeah, I'm going to yeah, be captain freedom, one day. Absolute freedom. So if you're going to be a captain one day, I'd like to see the day where, uh, you know... We meet out in the open sea and have a real, a real uh, adventure, you know. Like, uh, what do what do you say? What what do you, what do you say to being my rival? I say that's a great idea, <laughs> but I'm already one step ahead of you, for I am Captain Mako Tsunami. And he goes, and this what? one right here, as he points to her, because like, and he is my first mate. <laughs> <laughs> He goes, wow, you're really a captain? Roll me a uh, deception check. <laughs> 19. Yep. He's like, wow. Ah, I, I, that's the great thing about rivals. I guess I already got to get caught up to you. You know, um, next time you see me, I'm going to be a captain. And uh, yeah, he, he totally, totally buys it that you're this, this captain of the sea, Captain Mako. And he's like, He's like, so if you're a captain, you must have your own song that written about you. Surely there's there's a song about Captain Mako then. There is a song about Captain Mako. I'll go you, out there shortly and sing it to you all. You, you guys you guys are walking back to the main area with everybody. I imagine you guys are doing this as they all walk back. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh are the rest of you guys gonna go back to um over with uh, where Zar was. Do you want to go back and group up again there? Or do you want to hang out by the uh, bar? I'll go back to bartending for tips. Okay. Yeah. 
Nobody's Mako's interested gonna in... go and sing a, a song on top of the Dick, bar. Dixon, are you Excited. going to sit down with the rest of these guys? Are you gonna pick up your jar at all? Are you gonna leave it to keep watching? I'm gonna, or? I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick the jar up. Okay, you pick the jar up. I'm gonna stay away from Czar and whatever he's doing over there. <laughs> okay. Hang out at the bar. Okay, so you're hanging out at the bar. It seems like Luffy is now, or sorry, Luffy is now back up at the uh, on top of the bar and he's like listen up everybody this guy is apparently captain mako let's 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 just sing a song about captain mako so he's kind of calling your bluff and he goes if you're really a captain let's hear your song he goes and he's like he casts minor illusion and like starts like showing like a like a bun like Sounds of waves and stuff like that, and he goes and uh, then oh. pours out on his bar skin and casts shape water and uh, starts creating an animation of like the song he's about to describe. Also, cool there is that? there there is a bard over here. Do you want the bard to be involved at all to play music? Yeah, I'm also gonna say you. And as I point to uh, the, the I'll bard. say the bard's been moving around like he's uh, yeah. greeting people at the door, like right here. There's like a little little desk area where you know he's kind of greeting people and playing some stuff, getting tips, and he kind of notices. Oh, I see what's going on here. And so as you go over there, there's this Kenku bard, and I can't rotate him because it's the way it's set up. But he's he's facing you, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you you call out to uh, what do you say? Like to the bard? Say I need a, give me a shanty tune for the background as I go and do this. He's and like, so Mako's trying to really make a big show off of this. And so the bard just kind of cocks to the side and he's like, he's like, uh, repeat your song. You know, he's kind of like, uh, oh, you know, the song Captain Mako. And he's like, can I now this, like, this, this Kenko, <laughs> Kenku knows, uh, you know, hundreds of songs, but the weird thing about Kenku's is, and, uh, go, you 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 would know. Actually, roll me a roll me a um, uh, either a history check or a nature check on the Kenku. Twenty-two, nat twenty. Nice. So you know that Kenkus actually can only imitate sounds that they've heard before, and he's never heard of this song before. So <laughs> as you do that, he's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of cocks his head like and he starts playing another song and it seems like he's very good but he can only imitate other artists that he's already heard so he can't generate new music and since uh i don't think that your song has been uh well known yet uh he has no idea <laughs> what what to play oh i don't think so he's like that that's what he says don't worry about that yeah <laughs> it's like oh okay He's and then like, he says this. I'll have Show to do it my own then. You got. Oh, my name was Captain Mako. As I swam, as I swam. Oh, my name was Captain Mako. As I swam. My name was Captain Mako. And ocean's laws I did not forget. And so wickedly I get away I did As I swam, as I swam So wickedly I did Oh, my name was Captain Mako As I swam, as I swam Oh, my name was Captain Mako As I swam My name was Captain Mako In the ocean laws I did not forget And so wickedly I get away I did As I swam, as I swam So wickedly I did As I swam as I swam, oh, oh I escaped a man of war. Oh, as I swam, as, as I swam, swam, oh, I escaped a man of war. As I swam, I swam away from the war. I escaped a man of war. Oh, I escaped a man of war. As I swam, as I swam, as I, swam. I escaped a man of war. As I swam, Mako Tsunami, also known as Captain Mako.
Anyways. And he like, he just stops. Like, the water drops, and uh, the sound of the waves drops as well as he ends his uh, illusion. Nice. Uh, go ahead and give me a performance check now. <laughs> and uh, with it, advantage. Sorry. <laughs> uh, and then, and then uh, you also get one point of inspiration for role playing your character. Sweet. So, so do it with advantage. Not, not with advantage. But if you get a bad roll, you can always use your inspiration to reroll it if you'd like. Also, That's does right. any <laughs> does, would anyone else? What, how would you guys have reacted to Mako b- pulling out this song that I don't think anybody have ever heard of? Uh, it's yeah. called Ca- Captain Mako. I'm like, I'm, I'm surprised and taken <laughs> aback when I see him start singing and then i'm gonna like watch the bar and and see like what the the reaction is and if it looks okay. like he's bombing i'm gonna be like <laughs> yeah and I'll just start like cheering for him and like throwing beer at people basically <laughs> okay uh what about dixon uh i'm all in like fucking uh Kind of pounding oh, so you're slamming down. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Give it a beat. All right. All right. So, yeah, I was going to ask you guys before he started singing this, but uh, if you've been banging like that and uh, Herc, you're waiting to see the reaction, I'll say um, you can do it with advantage since you have a, a comrade helping you out. It's kind of like helping that since Sweet. he was banging on the table like that, I'll give you advantage since Dixon Thanks, was Dixon. giving you a beat. <laughs> so, like, Dixon, as Dixon, do you know, do you, are you a music, musical guy? I can't remember with your. Uh, uh, the Avengers. There was no music background for you, right? Really? I mean, we hang out in Hamtramck bars. I don't know. Hey. So I, I assume you start singing along. You kind of start like muttering yeah. along with him as well. And so, I'm, I'm okay, we rolled like just eighteen. Eighteen. So yeah, uh, with with his help, uh, with uh, banging on the table and kind of mumbling around with you, like, na, 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 like you know. <laughs> Not exactly singing the words, but matching your tone a little bit and giving you a little bit of a beat, you know, like a little little beatbox and half lane there, you know. He kind of gives you a little shanty mix. And uh, it actually, it sounds pretty good. Um, sounds like uh, people are liking it. So on the second second time around when you do the verse, uh, and actually, uh, Dixon has a keen mind, right? So he remembers everything that people say. So when you go around to the second chorus... He has memorized it all. It, it, would you like to join him? Uh, with that, Dixon? Yeah, a little, little call and response kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like he instantly <laughs> memorizes your song with his keen mind, and um, and that's just like a D and D ability where you can remember what people say and what's written down and stuff like that. And actually, I, I imagine that you could even like sketch it out. You can even like write it down so he remembers it for later. <laughs> <laughs> um, and now it's like a published little song there that you can, you know, pass around and maybe even if you guys wanted to, if, if the bar likes it, you could, uh, either give it to the bard so you can learn the song and, uh, or like you can give it to other people, like give it around, you write it down and make copies and stuff like that. I'm sure you can sell it if you wanted to. If the, if, the, if the bard witnesses it, he can recall it, right? Y- yeah. Yeah. He, like, he just saw it. So yeah, so the bard, the, the bard song. can, yeah, he can perfectly recreate it now. But you know, you join in as it's happening. Unlike unlike the Kenku, you have keen minds, so you're able to like halfway in just join in on the song. As soon as you hear the first round of it, you join in the second one, and so everybody everybody loves it. Everybody's going like that, and and Luffy's like, "Wow, Captain Mako, that's my rival there. One day I'm gonna be just like him." And so he kind of adjusts his straw hat and, you know, hunkers down. And he it seems like he's got a fire lit under him now as well. Cool. So, Herc, right. did you join, did you join in then now that it's a, now that you're a Fairweather fan? Yeah. Yeah. No, I've, I've been cheering all along, but like, oh, yeah. I wanted to like gauge my enthusiasm to like really ramp it up to like help him out if he if it, it, it wasn't going well but uh i got you i got you you're gonna well. start like get pouring people more beer and like <laughs> making yeah, them <exactly>. happy <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right so you guys all pretty successful with that and since it was a successful song yeah i also give uh if you don't already have maxed out inspiration Herc, you got it and so does dixon 
So you guys both get another point of inspiration for helping out your buddy. And um, where's everybody at right now? Herc, do you have two points of inspiration? Uh, uh, two out of two? I think so. Yeah, I had uh, at least one inspiration already, so I'm just going to assume I have two. Okay. I uh, have Dick, two now. You have two, and then Dixon, do you, is that your first one, or do you, have, do you remember? Uh... Sure. Yeah, I don't. I haven't been paying attention. <laughs> I think you got. Let's 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 say you got one. I don't remember uh, technically giving you one before. No, okay. I don't think you were inspired when you were like viciously mockering children. Although you know, <laughs> maybe I don't know. <laughs> no, <I> don't <laughs> maybe so. maybe that be. was. Uh, it was a little out of character for you in the moment. It was like that yeah. existential yeah. crisis you had. Where, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We all have our we all have our moments. You know, where we get a little carried away. <laughs> You know, no. one person's existential crisis is another's moment of inspiration. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so I'm going to say that you got one, the other guy's got two. Okay, cool. All right, awesome. So, uh, and with that, you guys end your performance. And um, yeah, you guys want to keep moving on, or do you want to hang out at the bar, or do you want to go join up with Zar? What do you want to do? I'm ready to go join up with Zar. Yeah. Um, I mean, the whole reason I was over here at Tenant Bar is to give him space to talk to Burka, but um, I feel like they've had enough time now that I feel like we can okay. probably regroup. That's very considerate of you, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've already spawned. You guys can move your characters freely if you want to move, by the way. Don't, uh, yeah. don't, don't. <laughs> you can just kind of tell me. Like, you can always move, and then, like, if I say, like, oh, hold on a second, then I'll tell you move it back. But you can feel free to move it around. Like, it's, you know. We've We've already exposed the whole bar to Mako getting wet, so we might as well <laughs> head over and check what Zara's doing. <laughs> See how wet he is. Yeah. Well, as Mako, as Mako, as you go past uh, Luffy there, you actually hear this noise. <laughs> yeah. And the little, Sweet. the little dice necklace that you have on there, which I have artwork for, but I did not upload. I'll upload that later in the post. Um, you know, it, it glows again, letting you know that there's some sort of magic item that it seems to be coming from the direction of Luffy. Because you're not quite sure what it is. Can so. I, like, uh, take one last cast guidance and, like, kind of take one more look at myself to, like, kind of, like, add him to kind of, like, see if I see anything on his person immediately? So what would you like to do exactly? You're trying to visually inspect him? Are you trying to talk to him? Or are you trying yeah, to I'm do trying to a magical check? Him, uh, and I'm just casting guidance on myself because like I see the dice doing that and like I'm trying to like sure. gauge what's going on right now and like yeah. Roll right. me an investigation check. Got it. Yeah, I'll put something up on the stream so you guys it's not a final version of the art, but it's one of the that ones would I had. Be, uh, twenty. You roll a twenty? Like a dirty no, twenty. No, with the, I had a guidance with me, oh, so okay. like that added up. Yeah, to so a, total like a dirty 20. dirty twenty. Yeah, so you see that it seems to be pulling towards his um, straw hat. Hmm. All right. It I seems to be coming from there. I walk away and join my companions. Okay. All right. Sure. All right. So yeah, you go. You can go ahead and you already walk by him. All right. Cool. So Waldo's yeah. back over here. Uh, Dixon, are you still there? Are you in Waldo's? You're kind of in Waldo's spot right now. So I don't know. <laughs> what you want to do? <laughs> he's what like, I do? he's like, hi, there, friend. Uh, <laughs> see you're in my seat. There's two Dixons, by the way. I'm the. Are Sorry, there? I might have. Uh, yeah, and then I got lost. Right I couldn't see us. myself, so I dropped. Okay, so you already moved then. I moved. I'm over okay. by. Uh, he just deleted event. you, bro. Okay. <laughs> cool. Wait, Sam Neil's character still up there? What are you doing over there, Roland? Dr. Yeah. Roland, Roland Muldoon, folks. Famous Jeez. dino druid. Dru druid ranger, actually. So now you guys all join up. Uh, describe as you guys all start to sit down. Where, where are we leaving off with the... What do they walk in on, Zar, when they see you talking now that you've got reacquainted with Burka again? I was saying to, I was saying to Burka, you hear that music in the air, baby? That's our song. We're going to be playing that song. A year from now on our wedding night. Like that. <laughs> Man, so much confidence. <laughs> she's like, oh. she's like, <clears throat> she's like, well, that sounds really nice. Uh, but yeah, no, let's not. Let, 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 uh, um, she like sees everybody else starting to um, 
you know, kind of join in there. And she's like, kind of scooched over to, next to you in the booth. As everybody kind of goes there, she's going to, oh, um, kind of recollects herself. And uh, oh, like I said, um, if you could draft up those plans for me, that'd be uh, fantastic for the, uh, the, the the project for the rebuilding the bar. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, I'll rebuild anything you want me to rebuild. Anything. She's like, yeah, you can really, you look like you know how to skewer a dragon. Yes. <laughs> Everybody, you guys sit down next to them. Is that what's happening? Or are you guys yeah. all sitting? I'm going to sit. Okay. Tell me what you want to do. <laughs> you, it's up to you guys. Uh, all right. So, so who breaks? Who breaks into our trance first? Um, I guess I will. I'll. I'll I'm like sliding into the corner. I put a hand on your shoulder, like a little bit rougher than I, I would if I was doing it in a friendly way. And you know, I'll be like. <laughs> So, sir, how are things with you and Burka? Was it Burka going? Burka. Um, Her name is Burka. That's what they said, Burka. <laughs> yeah, he hesitated. Well, I was just confirming is if that. I'm sorry, we didn't properly get introduced. My name is Eric. <laughs> this is my friend Zar. Um, this is how he buys me things. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, That's she's like, it's 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 hard to find good help these days. Bless his heart, right? Because <laughs> if you recall, he said that was you, he was you're like his little helper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, shit. I'm picking up on the social cues here, and I said, okay, well, boss, <laughs> <laughs> did you find anything out about that person we were supposed to find? Because I know when you sent me off into the kitchen to ask about it, we didn't come back with much. You, you know, Burka, do you know Floon? Anything about a Floon? Floon? Burka is curious. He Her likes name is Floon. Floon. She like starts laughing. She's like, oh, <laughs> oh, you might... Uh, redheaded kid. Good looking for a human, I guess. He's probably not that good looking. Well, you know, for a human. Yeah, I, I heard I heard he's good with the ladies. Not on not on your level, of course. <laughs> then she kind of looks around and realizes that she just said, she's like, um, yeah, I saw a floon. Uh, he was in here the other night with that uh, Volothamp guy. Mm. Cocky bastard loves to run his mouth. What's how do you spell that? <laughs> Volo or Floon? Volo oh. is the guy from Volo Flo Thamp is oh, just. Floon was with Floon. Floon yep. with Volo. It's Volo Thamp Gadam. Volo Thamp Gadam. What else says? Okay. Also goes by Volo. He's the guy who's the author of Volo's Fifty Shades of Fae. <laughs> which uh, what, what's the book? What what did you hey. buy from? Uh, you bought the the rival. Uh, Ian Ian's character bought a rival <laughs> book. Um, and it was, was it the uh, Will of Gods or was it the other one? The was, volume yeah, one? The one by Drew's mom, yeah. <laughs> the Will 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 of Gods, because you know, there's multiple gods in the universe, you know. So. Right, right, right. Yeah. And by then Drew's I think mom. you bought uh, the first volume of um, her thing on uh, her adventures, the very real tales of whatever. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, that's Volo. Volo is the author of... Okay, okay. Everybody... So I, so I, Wait a minute. Hey. Immediately, I gotta ask Burke a question. Okay. So, you read that Fifty Shades book? <laughs> Talking about Fifty Shades of Fey? Yes. Everybody loves that crap, but oh, gotta right. admit it's got some good ideas in there. But I'm not much of a oh. sucker for, uh, you know, I'm not into all that, you know, restraints and shit. But you know, hey. I, I I gotta admit, I read the I read the undercommon version. It was it was just a single shade of gray. It was uh, right. <laughs> I you know I don't really speak common all that great, but I speak great undercommon. Let me tell you, you guys know that undercommon is like the, you know, like the pigeon speak the the with the 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 lesser quote unquote races can't speak common as well, but they understand undercommon. So it's that like Fifty Shades of Fey. It's like. Single shade of gray. Yeah. So, uh, so Mako's reacting to this. Uh, Mako, uh, how are you? How are you reacting to all this? Uh, this talk here. 
Mako's very confused. Like he's try like you know, like when like kids are trying to follow adult conversations and they don't know really what's going on. Mm-hmm. Like with all the words, that's kind of the face he has right now. Like thinking he's like, "Wow, I don't know what, what you're talking about, but uh, okay." Just kind of going with the flow, kind of fair like, enough. Yeah, soon looking confused. Uh, does Dixon react at all to the Volo stuff when they're talking about? Because um, you're like a, a fan of Volo, and he's kind of saying uh, "cocky bastard" loves to run his mouth, kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Any reaction to that? Or uh, I got like a what would you say? Kind of like a, a haughty sneer, like "eh." You, you, you don't understand. You know, <laughs> don't like understand a, the depth of Volo. <laughs> <laughs> this artistry. Yeah. <laughs> when he had that book on the guide to nymphs. Oh, who's going to do that kind of field work? You know? So so you kind of sneer at her and say that and, well, you know, so you wouldn't yeah. understand. It's probably. Uh, I'm not necessarily saying it, but it's just like a look like, oh. Uh, She's like, huh, what are you guys friends with Volo or something? Not I'm to, not a friend, but uh, you know, <laughs> as we, you all have guy, his gold in your pocket, <laughs> <laughs> you guys are all just like, hey, oh, fuck Volo. <laughs> He's an asshole. <laughs> yeah, so Zara's like, go, we're going with what Berker says. You know, one shade of gray, more, more like uh, my eyes are closed. You know, Berker, <laughs> have I mentioned your scales look good? He's like, thanks. I, uh, I exfoliate. It looks like it looks like you don't need to exfoliate. It looks like you exfoliate with diamonds at the end of the night. Yeah, you know they say diamonds are forever. <laughs> but with this skin, it's not always true. The torches gotta, on gotta, the gotta... wall here emanate in your eyes, and it makes me think of the eternal fire that could breed between our loins. Does uh, Floon think about the internal fire between the loins? Oh, yeah. Did Floon try to get with this? Oh, Floon. Yeah. We were talking about that guy. That's right. Yeah. Now, what do you, why are you asking about him? The red-haired, red-haired dude. Yeah, I saw him. Herc thinks he was in dead. here last night with Volo. They got hammered. You know, it's Volo just comes here because we got cheap drinks. I don't think he gives a shit about this bar. You think he'd pay more to tip better, too. He's rich as hell. Right? Herc, leave the lady a good tip tonight. I <laughs> have been working all night. I'm not here to patronize the bar. <laughs> <laughs> You've enjoyed their services. You've enjoyed the song. I was the services. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. The entitlement in this, these people. And that was the, the song. Day, uh, yeah, really. You guys are pulling your fucking way here. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Burka, can you believe help these days? I know, I know. But uh, I, I, I'm really curious now. What, what, Why are you guys looking for this floon guy? What's it to you? He's missing. Missing. Like there's sorry, sorry, boss. May I may I speak? <laughs> oh, finally, this guy's like learning. This. Seems to oh. be learning some manners. Yeah, what's up there, half work guy? Wait three seconds. Did speak. That's right. And she's like, she's like, can he count to three or is that? <laughs> we'll figure it out. I. Honestly, I forgot what I was going to say at this point. <laughs> You're asking what, about what, Floon. She's like, what? Floon. <laughs> She's asking you guys about Floon. <laughs> Why are yeah, you guys uh, asking about Floon? <laughs> we're, we're investigating, you know, we're heroes of the town. We're investigating all these missing disappearances. Um, and he seems to have gone missing last night and never came home from the bar. So, oh my we're God. We can track him down. There's so many disappearances lately. It's hard to keep track of them, you know. Now we got that elf killer on the loose. Now we got this. Shit. You don't you don't think it's the elf killer, do you? Well, he's not an elf, is he? I can start to tell with you humans. He wasn't. Yeah, it is hard to tell with us humans that I look around for a human. 
You have like half. <laughs> well, you're half human, right? <laughs> yeah, and, uh, I don't think you had pointy ears like you. So. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I saw those guys in here. So they, they played a few rounds of three dragon ante, and then uh, around midnight, uh, they, they Volo pieced out, and uh, Floon stayed behind. Uh, there was um, God, what was his name? Another red-haired fella came up to him. They they started playing, started drinking, uh, and then like I think after that there was these guys that followed him out uh five of them you know five right and she holds up fingers one two three four five got it I've this guys. many five guys five guys yeah they were um yeah they followed him out of the bar and uh i don't know i hadn't seen him after that but they were they were blistering drunk what's that uh uh charles you you uh glitched out on my end um, the, these five were, when you say followed him out, like they followed him out or they were actually following him as he went out. They followed both of the guys out. Uh, well, let's see. Like I said, all you humans look alike. So, um, they both, I mean, uh, it almost, you know, like they almost look like they're brothers or something like, um, uh, two redhead dudes left, uh, then a bunch of dudes wearing, wearing uh black cloaks um added out there and followed him out and i don't know after that that's all i can tell you it, it, it didn't black look like cloaks. they were they look kind of sneaky like yep hmm. dressed in uh all black you don't know who these other black clothed fellows uh, were if i had to guess probably xanathar that's all they wear i mean not xanathar probably xantarum Okay, that's not so bad. As you guys recall, Zentarms were black, and the Xanathar boys, the crazy cultist guy, they were purple. The Zentarum mm. uh, were involved in that um, massacre that we saw with the cops, right? Both sides, yeah. A bunch of dead Xanathar dudes that you found with uh, Captain Kowalski that was there. Or was it Captain? Constable Kowalski that you guys... Uh, you know, he's, he's a bit of he's a bit of a weenie. I don't know. You know, I, I was the guy that you met. He wasn't really the cop's the, name, and all I wrote was important. "acab." <laughs> you wrote what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I was checking my notes thing. for what I had to say about the cops at all. <laughs> the only thing I wrote there was <laughs> <laughs> Um. So yeah, she says she mm -hmm. says there was these black guys, and she says that well, no, these guys dressed in black, I should say, <laughs> and uh, they all followed them out of the bar, and um. Yeah, and that's what she said about that. If you, I don't know if you want to ask anything more, but yeah. Uh, she said you guys, you guys know the uh, the Zentarum. We're vaguely familiar. Yeah, well, it's confusing because they're always seems like their lack of leadership makes it very confusing. I don't know which branch of the their little factions these guys were from, but they they, they look like they uh. Well, I don't know. Hank, what would you say? And so she talks to the, this guy over here, Hank. He's like, Hank, what, 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 you know, all those humans look alike. What, what exactly would you say these Zentarums were? And Hank's like, ah, oh, yes, uh, Miss Berka, um, she, uh, I believe they were, uh, the crazy ones, the crazy ones. And he's like, yeah, okay, thanks, Hank. And so Hank kind of goes away. And she's like, I like yeah, that, Hank. Hank. We should have a Hank. Yeah, so Hank, yeah, he's not bad. I mean, I just keep him here because he, he remembers stuff. You know, he's, he keeps an eye out for, for everybody. But, uh, Her, yeah. They're kind of like our Hank. You know that? I thought Dixon was our Hank. I thought his <laughs> name was Hank. Everybody needs <laughs> everybody needs a Hank. She's like, yeah, it's one of the, so it's one of those Zent zealots. You know, ah, uh, shit. Where are they at? Um, Hank, get back here. And Hank's like, bitch. He just like just started walking away. He's like, y yes, yes, Perka. <laughs> yes. He's like, uh, where, where are those guys? Where, where, where are those Z zealot guys at? He's like, I, I believe that they have a warehouse. Uh, I can show you on the map. She's like, yeah, yeah, here we go. And she, she whips out a map. It's actually a very nicely drawn map. It's a hand-drawn map. It looks like she drew it herself. And she's like, uh, point to it. And he's like, 
right there. And he marks it on the map. And uh, she's like, there you go. And she's like, uh, hands the map to kind of like tucks it into, rolls it up and kind of tucks it into uh, Herc's pocket, let's say. Okay. His pants pocket. Just kind of slips it in oh, there. Oh, she's giving it to me and not to Czar? She's giving it to Czar. Oh, sorry. She, I meant Czar. She tucks it directly in his pants? Oh, okay. Czar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She just kind of. Yeah. She got a little gropey. <laughs> she kind of just, it. she just kind of leans over and just kind of slides it on in there. So um, she's like, she's like, I can always make another map with those. That's just for you. That's my personal, personal map of the city. So now uh, Zara has like a very detailed. Else? Zara has like a very can detailed map of the city now. Uh, What's that? Uh, I don't care. Got anything else for me, Berka? I'm just slipping in. She's like, yeah. I mean, I can. I, I got a bunch, a whole bunch of skills you haven't even seen yet, sweetheart. I mean, uh, you know, like I know, I, like. Everybody always thinks of me as Burke the Berserker, you know, oh, I'm big, bad Berserker, but I got a softer side. W- would you like to see my softer side? I feel like I already do. <laughs> <laughs> and so she, she, as she does this, she's like, starts, she's, she's, as you guys were talking, she, you realize she actually drew like a sketch of Zar and it's like in charcoal and it looks <laughs> exactly like you, like photorealistic, <laughs> except Except certain areas are slightly exaggerated. I think my tail's a little bigger, don't you think? But it's beautiful. <laughs> <Burka>. <laughs> yeah, no problem, baby. So, um, yeah, so she's like, yeah, I got an artsy side. You know, one of these times I can paint you like one of my French girls. You know, I got these French girls that work for me. I think I'm going to go yeah. over to the other side of the bar now. <laughs> Mako goes to the other side of the bar. Mako wants to go away. He's not curious at all about the pirates and stuff that they asked him to do before. He doesn't want to listen to this conversation. He's going away. <laughs> I, I, all right. Hey, Mako, Mako, come on. Grow up a little bit. You know, get some hair under those gills. I thought, I thought that Mako didn't understand because it was all over his head. Because, like, if you recall, you came over here because you wanted to, you were told by Snake that Burka might know about the pirate mm-hmm. stuff in the area. From now, from now on, Burke and I are only talking in hushed whispers between each other that no one else can understand. And trust me, it does not involve the plot of the rest of the game. Okay, so where we left off, she was touching, tucking that map in your pocket, and you guys now have an objective marker. So I, from a from a DM, this is me just telling you, you have an objective marker, okay, on a map now. <laughs> I don't think okay. get more explicit than that. That you have the literal <laughs> location of uh, where the Zentarum uh, warehouse is. So use that as you may. <laughs> All right. So she, she tucks that in there, and she's like, uh, "There you go. Hopefully that helps you guys find your one of those redheaded dudes." Mm-hmm. Our, our uh, question for the DM, the yep. connection to the Zentarum, ha, does Yagra work for the Doom Raiders? Is that a faction, sub-faction of the Zentarum? Yep, there's two factions. There's what up? I call the Zent Zealots, which is what she was talking about, the crazy ones. And then there's the Doom Raiders, who are led yeah. by Davil Starsong and one, and one of and her, like, in his first... Um, Right hand girl, which is Yagra, you know, who's uh, they're all part of the Doom Raiders, and they are, they are the ones that have they raid the dooms of liches. Liches have dooms, that's what they call them, and uh, yeah, they have a different symbol. There's is the one that is a winged snake, but it has a a skull with uh, the snake coming out of the skull, like the skull of a lich. Okay. You know, slightly different. They showed it to you earlier that there's um. You know when they when Davil was talking about in his in his, in his sun elf accent and he was like, yeah, and he was telling you about um, the differences between the two factions and he's telling you uh, he told you about Erstel Flaxen who is the, the leader of the more zealot based guys who are trying to uh, make the zealots great again, make make the Zentarum great again kind of thing um, like they oh used boy. to be back in the day back in like third edition and second edition of D and D fourth edition we don't talk about fourth edition. Yep. Try not to talk about the fourth one. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody, uh, ever, ever, you good there, Herc? That, does that sound good? Yep. So, yeah, she says, yeah, yes, hope she, that's, uh, that helps. She says, hopefully you guys can find that one. Just, um, look for the snake symbol on the door. Thank you. No problem. Anything for friends of, uh, Bazaar here, you know? 
She said, anything else I can do for you fellas? I can do think of several to, uh, Do you need me to help you down off your booster seat there, boss? <laughs> As a matter of fact, yes. I'm a little... I've had a little bit of the spice. I bow and I today. reach out my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm down now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, I, uh, have, uh, one question for you. Uh, these, uh, Zenitarum Zealots, is there anything, uh, they fear or worry about? Sounds, perhaps, or, uh, images? Yeah, like I said, the winged snake is their symbol. Uh, you know, so I said, look, look for a snake on the door. Uh, what was your other question? Something about sounds? Yes. Are there any signals of uh, gangs make and stuff like that before they attack? Before they attack? Uh, I don't, you know, I'll be honest with you. The gangs of the city, it's a big headache for me. I know you got to be able to navigate it. See, I, I come from more of a, a sailor's background, as I'm sure you'll understand. I, I know more about the seas, the, the politics and gangs of the city, uh something I I don't I, I get a headache about. But um Yeah, I don't know if you know this, but I was telling your friends are here, but uh my ship was attacked by pirates and uh they they, they drove that anchor through the through the roof that you see there and uh it's never really been the same since. Pirates? Yeah, they're like the gangsters of the sea, you know? That's the people that I know. They're the ones that took my people. Oh, you're like uh, some kind of freaky fish guy, right? I am not a freaky fish guy. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. They must have been a trans translational <laughs> issue. Uh, sorry, it's... Uh, I, 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 my native language is uh, draconic, so... Mm. Zara speaks in Draconic, and he's like, yeah, he's a freaky fish guy. <laughs> I am not a freaky fish guy. In Draconic, you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, yes, yeah. Uh, they took my people. Oh, gosh. How long ago was that? Did I know your people. Uh, they all left. That uh, When was it? Not, not too, too long, long ago, ago, was it, go? So you were uh, you're part of all those the disappearances, you would say. <laughs> when all those people yes. disappeared. Man. There sure are a lot of those lately. But that was the everybody. I thought you guys up and skipped town. You tell me that uh somehow pirates are involved? Yes, they enslaved my people to go to the deep depths to salvage wrecks and valuables. They slave away all day and then go to the ships and to do it all over again. Hmm. Well, it sounds like they're uh in some deep, deep waters there. They're in the deep depths of uh, something, something pretty nasty. Let me ask you something. Um, you think they're here in water deep? Well, there's anybody could be in water deep now. It's the Sea Maidens Festival going on. Sea, Maid, sea Maidens Fair. There's all sorts of crazy people coming in here. I wouldn't be surprised in this very bar. But most of these guys are just sailors. Some of the I'm sure you, uh, I heard you talking with, uh, Waldo over there about, uh, his crew, all sorts of people coming through here, but I don't know. You guys seem like pretty trustworthy guys. Um, I, you know, normally don't talk about this, but you know, that broken anchor, uh, it, it's, it's more than just, uh, what wrecked my ship. It's, it's, it's part of a larger network. They call themselves the broken anchor. And she uh, sketches you as she's talking. She sketches out this. She's like, you ever heard of the broken anchor? Uh, I have not. Other than you just talking about it now, no. Well, that's okay. I'll explain it to you. Uh, there, guy. Her, Hank, Hank, Herc, what was your name again? <laughs> it's Herc. <Hank> <laughs> uh, okay, that's a little hard for me to remember, but whatever. So, yeah, um... Call him Hank, babe. I'll call you H. Okay. <laughs> so basically, uh, yeah, the thing was, uh, 
my 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 ship was attacked not just by any pirates see i i didn't have a pirate crew i had a i had a trustworthy crew that used to follow me to any all the four corners of the forgotten realms they'd follow me anywhere in the, in the battle but we did some trade with some some folks that were wrapped up in the the black anchor network and it's a it's a system of pirates and people who essentially cut their ties and uh with with whatever alliance they're with and they they form up but just like the anchor they get dra they all get dragged down to the and and can't go anywhere you know it's like a, it's like a metaphor i think you know i'm not great with those but it's like some sort of metaphor about cutting ties you know but um yeah they they sunk my they sunk my pride and joy my ship and it's never been the same since so uh if you're if your people have been uh wrapped up in some kind of slave trade there's only two possible options the way i see it it's the xanathar has lately been uh getting involved in this the smuggling of people as well he's known for smuggling uh illegal goods and but he's also been smuggling people which by the way perk you would know would know this because uh you were involved with the xanathar's operations before he double crossed you and he at the time he was not involved in the slave slave trade Although interestingly, you ended up sort of a slave after you know this deal went bad. Hmm, interesting. And uh, and then she's also like, so she's like the Xanathar. They they're getting involved in the save trade, but even the Xanathar, he's not a big fish compared to this this network. Even he has to play ball. Uh, so if I had to guess, I'd say that he he would know about the, the um the black or the the broken anchor network because even he has to play ball with those guys. You don't want to mess with them, but you show this picture and she hands it to uh, Mako. Show, show this picture around. There's plenty of pirates to ask. You find someone who, uh, you, you be careful when you ask because uh, you're taking a risk every time you show them this picture. They may help you. They may not. They may hurt you. But uh, if that's a risk you're willing to take for your people, uh, I would ask it. I would ask about it. Ask about the broken anchor. I'll do what I must. Thank you, Berka. Okay, so Mako takes that, and now he has that in his inventory. He has the sketch of the Broken Anchor and some notes that she wrote down about the Broken Anchor organization, what little she does know about it, and how they uh, seem to have uh, screwed her over, and it seems like they're involved with the, the slave trade, so it may be related to what you're asking about. Cool. Zara's got to be like, Burka baby, I got to do this thing for Herc, you know, but I'll be back. She's like, just be careful, careful there, uh, my little czar, because uh, there, there's a lot of people disappearing out there. I don't know if you realize. So uh, even uh, you, uh, there's a lot of kobolds that uh, frequent around the, the the dung sweeper guild. Do you you know about the dung sweeper guild, right? Yeah. You got some some history with them. Yeah, they're involved in some some deep shit, you know. But uh, <laughs> just be careful. I know you you probably if you know them, you probably know the Mule Skull Tavern, right? And uh, you, uh, Zara would know this because um, the Mule Skull okay. Tavern is your, your old stomping grounds. <laughs> that place it's got my name written in it more pla more places than my homework ever had. He's like, you just be careful around there. I heard that. Uh, some of the elves in that area specifically were uh, abducted and possibly they showed up later killed. So, uh, Are you, you mean to say the pointy ear murderer was there? I don't know what to think. All I know is people have been disappearing and they've had pointy ears. I think you'd be okay, but I'd just be worried about you and your friends like Hank there with his pointy My ears. My servant is a pointy eared man. Right. So I think he's a he, man. Just be careful if you go around your old stomping grounds. <laughs> My I like, I, I sw swipe a, a beer off of a table that like somebody's been half drinking and I just start chugging it. Just let. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So yeah. Uh, so she just kind of gives you a, you guys can find it on the map, Mule Skull Tavern. It is your old place you hung out. It is where the Dung Sweeper Guild is known to have their kind of guild hall and kind of like their little festive, fest hall, like uh, headquarters where a lot the, of, it's in the, it's in the chats. Yep. Mule Skull oh. Tavern. 
It's in the chat there. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got it. Thank you. You're good, man. Cool. All right. So she just tells you to be careful before you head out. And she's like, she's like, uh, and you know, maybe you can talk with the, the guild members there and they can put you in good standing with some of the other guilds or something. I don't know. But uh, I, I know you can, uh, I, I know you'll come through for me. I believe in you, Czar. Oh, I'll come for you. I'll come through for you. Oh, yeah. And so she smooth, kind of, as, as you go away, she's, smooth. yeah. So she has the, she's like, and remember, you got my card if you ever need, a, ever need me. You know, and uh, she gives you that uh, special card, that, uh, that life card that will move towards her as you guys leave, as you guys start to head out, you know, leave the bar. You guys say your goodbyes part ways. And uh, she says to be careful, especially when we're going around the Mule Skull Tavern. Okay, and you guys want to head out then? Yep, I'm ready. Yeah. Please, God. Say my okay. goodbyes and start, <laughs> start at the door. <laughs> okay, so you guys are going to head out, and we're going to go to the map. I'm going to pull you guys over to the map. Also going to pull the interactive what map. It kind of looks like a face. Looks like a what? It does. I didn't hear yeah, it. You know what I'm saying? Like a big nose there, and then the market is an eye. It looks like a You know, face. it does. It looks like it looks like some asshole bird creature with a large forehead. <laughs> I thought it looked like, like a piece Jarnathan. of steak. Jarnathan, yeah, it does look like Jarnathan. Does <laughs> good old Jarn Hammond. <laughs> with his Jarnathan. pimp cane. What the hell happened to Jarnathan, man? Because that you have his cane, bro. <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> I'm worried Turns too. Out Zoblob's the elf murderer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Seems like such a nice eccentric old man, but no. All right. So I think I got the uh, token that I need to pull up for you guys. Should Did you say uh, Bepis went missing at Ammon's farm? Yep. And I'll show you guys some of this stuff because I know I just uh, dumped a lot of quests on you at once. Yeah. We got like uh, so much. I just saw that on the guys map. Got a lot I wrote down. Damon's farm, and I was like, "Oh, maybe, maybe I heard that wrong." Yeah, let yeah, me. Uh, I'm not. Up the, I'm not. Go on. Uh, I'm just trying to get the water deep interactive map for you guys. I'm share that real quick. If you guys go up to that, you'll find uh, more relevant markers. So I will put that in the chat really quick for you guys, and also uh, you can search for uh, the farm there, which is what I'm doing right now to make sure it's not. I can't remember if it's Amend or Amen's farm. Oh, it's Wait, on the so map it is right Damon's here. Damon's farm? Right here. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, so I'll tag these for you guys. Okay. Yeah, all right, so I'll let me orient you guys a little bit here. Um, I'll try to point out for the chat, too. So you guys are somewhere down here, probably. Like in the dock ward around here ish. And then uh, up above, we have. The field ward, which is right here, which he told you to, while I was trying to essentially tell you that there's a very uh, the disappearance is going on, and this is the only unofficial ward of the city. Actually, the whole city was built. There's all these different sections, these different districts called wards, and you know the crappiest one is usually the dock ward, but it's it's you have to go through there if you want to do business with the harbor and stuff. So even though it's kind of run down, there's a lot going on. There's still a play, a reason to be there. But if you're in the field ward over here, you are just some of the poorest of the poor people and you just are, there's no real benefits to there. It's actually built after the rest of the walls were already built to the city. And I think it's related to something to do with the troll. There's like that troll gate up top. It was something related to the fact that like they were trying to seek shelter during like one of the hard times and people built, uh, around that here's a here's a clip I can show, here's a field word i can show you guys so the field word is just kind of like a rundown area of the city and actually um you guys would all be very well aware as residents of Waterdeep that the whole city is protected with a dragon's ward and that that ward essentially makes it so that dragons cannot enter the city they can't fly into the city because it's all protected but what's funny about that is it's only got a certain range and it doesn't exactly cover the whole field ward because it's not technically a part of the city like an official part of the city they built walls around it but walls are only so good versus dragons so nobody really wants to like live in the field ward in case that happens and there's there's mm. like known there's like a known dragon that like a green dragon that lives just above the city <laughs> so uh you know 
that's the north part of the city, so you really wouldn't want to be there. But ironically, the sea ward is like where all the rich people live, like the upper class live in the upper city. But the field ward at the very top is the poorest of the poor. So just so you guys know. And then to the northeast of that is Eamon's Farm. It's north of, there's like a labor camp that they send to people like, I don't know, people that try to hurt children and things like that, like real bastards, you know. They, they send them, they sentence them to hard labor and they send them to a labor camp that's around here on the side of the city. Eh, it's not marked, but somewhere around here on this, this side, there's like a prisoner camp for all the people who are working off hard labor. And that's right north of, uh, north of that is Eamon's Farm, okay? So you guys are right here and uh, where the little Vicarious Ventures logo is. And so what you guys are going to do is you travel up and you make your way down, not on a rickshaw, get rid of that. <laughs> so you guys head up. Uh, it's, it's, we it's, do have rickshaw's uh, business card, right? So we can call them back if we need them. You do. Yep. Yeah, we do have that. I would love to ride on a tongue propelled rickshaw again. You know, it's an experience. <laughs> Do you guys want to uh, call upon this guy again? It is very late. It's like it's it's like you know ten or eleven o'clock. What we're what we're doing first? That's it. Yeah, let's get yeah, let's get the destination. I'll show you where. Yeah, I'll show you guys where. I do where, want the character um, to show back up. I want to hear Ian do rickshaw boy again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can even remember my voice. I'll try. You're like, oh yeah, <laughs> hunky boys. Every time. You kind of had a broken speech. or like. Ah, yes, hunky boys come with me. Like, um, I don't hunky remember boys. how you did it, but yeah. you're like, um, you boys, said something. You said like, yeah, um, like that. you rides with me. Yeah, yes, yes. You like had like kind of like a pigeon thing where you, you know, broken grammar and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But you were um, whispering to your precious cart. Ah, oh, yes, yes. Yeah, you it go with hunky like boys. A, we like, like a, them, like yes. A, it seemed like a, almost like a oh. assistant to Dracula. Uh, what's his name? Renfield. Yeah, Igor. It was a bit of a Renfield esque gay man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know which. <laughs> that helps. So, uh. His assistant? Yeah. Where do we right. want to. Uh, I'm going to shrink. I got to shrink this down just a little bit so it's more um, accurate. So, do you guys want to call on Rickshaw again and pay again to go there? Or do you want to go. It's It has thinned out. Um, it's not as busy because it's like 11 o'clock at night, you know. Um. That's, uh, so, that's so, high time for a bar. Come on, man. But like, let's go to that bar that the lady told us to go to with the guild and all that. So A, I can get her in good graces and B, we could find that elf killer. And I think she told you ass. don't go near that area, if you recall. Yeah. Well, exactly. just a reminder as well. You guys do have uh, someone who was uh, possibly kidnapped and might be a time sensitive thing. Just letting you know as the DM, that's Which something one? you consider. Who? Who's the time-sensitive one? Because everyone's been kidnapped slash missing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's so many missing people. Yeah, which one is time-sensitive? Usually with the missing persons case, it's a time is of the essence. Okay, which say. one's that one? Which that one is the Floon. One? That is where I'm about to mark Floon. on your map right now is where the oh. warehouse is. Um, warehouse I'm just I'm zooming in for you. So right here, you guys see now. this? You guys see right here? Yeah. Right in the center of this, if you zoom in enough, there, you'll see something called Candle Lane. So it's not very far away from you guys. If you guys go up, you guys are at Filet Lane right now. And if you just kind of head up the way of the dragon here, like, you know, follow up that, you would, uh, so you're like down here. But if you were to follow this up on the way of the dragon, you can go there. Uh, Mule Skull Tavern is, whoops. I think just went blank. Uh, is a little bit further down uh, near the... I guess actually by Cod, I think the field, Mule Skull Tavern is in Cod Lane over here. And then there's also a bar that uh, Herc used to frequent um, called the House of Tarmagus, I think. House of Tarmagus. Let's just go to Herc's bar and hang out. Herc's Lots of places to go. Bar, which is over here. So just so you guys know, this is like uh, Zara's old stomping grounds and Herc's old stomping grounds. But um, like I said, um, it is a time-sensitive thing with the thing. You, you can go to these other places, but just from like a DM's perspective, if you do that, it might not end very well. Let's Spoiler go to alert. a place that ends well. <laughs> um, Let's go to Candle Lane. What I'm Candle thinking Lane is, is we got uh, Berka gave us a map, right, with a location on it where these uh, Zentrum dudes hang out. 
Yep. And that's our best lead on where Floon is, right? Because they followed Floon out of the bar. She says that yep, the guys yep. that were from there were wearing black. They were Zent- Zentarum zealots, and that they were, have the, the winged snake on the door of a warehouse that is located at that part of the map where I just highlighted. And I'm trying to find the candle lane, right? Yeah. Did everybody find that? By the way, candle lane. It's kind of like right here. It's, it's it's very easy to find. Okay. Cool. So, like I said, you can do whatever you want, but. I want to go help the mystic person. I'm, I know I'm not supposed to say as DM. But how are you? I would I would probably go get I'm the guy go who's for like the a thing that's been heavily thing. suggested for the past five minutes. <laughs> Wait, <stop>. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, who's, got who's the time Right, we don't know where he is. <laughs> Loon Blagmar. He might be at the. He, he was, was like getting get tracked down by some Zenitarum people, and the Zenitarum zealots hang out at this Candelane area, so we can go question them right. there to figure out you guys... where we go from there to find uh, Flume. Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. I agree with that. I you can guys... use a short rest too, by the way. If you guys are into that. <laughs> sure. I took some damage a couple sessions ago, and I'd love to get that back. <laughs> oh, why don't point. you say anything, man? Uh, uh, we we, do we that, haven't gotten so. into combat, so it hasn't been a problem. But when you did the, like um, that yeah, might so, become an issue later. So when you guys did the ride on um, rickshaw earlier, we can count that as a short rest. That's fair. Sick. When you guys use uh, that to travel around the city, that's how we can call that a short rest. Because if you take oh, an hour to do a short rest, that hour could make a difference in finding Floon. Yeah, we didn't fuck anybody up in this bar just now. So far, so he's, he's he disappeared handle. very late <laughs> last night. You heard that it was like midnight when they switched. The other guy showed up. Bolo left. Another guy showed up with also with red hair. They both got followed out by five yeah. guys, and then he hasn't seen them since. Yep. So yeah. you know, so every hour probably lane. counts. We're gonna question the boss or whoever else we find, and then we're gonna find Floon probably tied to a chair with his balls hanging down getting whipped. maybe i don't think these people take very kindly to us knocking on their door considering they were described as zealots yep. so all i need to know uh, now is are you I guys minor illusion and i say no worries herc and i go and like put like a, a snake symbol on my arm beautiful love that great initiative Okay, so now you yeah. have a, you're going. He's going to Candelain with a snake symbol on your arm, right? Yeah. Uh, hey, you always forget. You always forget. We got to like, once what's we back. get closer. I'm gonna go and recast it again. It probably wouldn't last that long, but uh, yeah, once we get close there, I can go and recast it. Okay. So yeah. That way, it has a longer period of time. So we got an, a, a casting of minor illusion, a short rest with the tongue fucking rickshaw, and then we're there. <laughs> we cast mm-hmm. it again. Bingo, bango. We find Floon. <laughs> yes. Did you say tongue fucking rickshaw? <laughs> <laughs> That's way better than what I said, so I'm going to go with it. <laughs> oh, man. This guy's all pent up from potentially striking out with Berkey. He's got to go <laughs> fucking tongue fucking rickshaw. <laughs> okay, is he ready for the... Uh intro here as you guys pull up to candle lane building as the buildings on either side of candle lane are so tall and so tightly packed together that light touches the street only at high sun although it's very late at night right now but you know that even during the the high sun like high noon it is very dark in this alley gloom and gloom envelops a narrow alley a narrow alley as dark as a dungeon and as odorous as one too nearly all the street lamps have been smashed the only light that fully pierces the darkness is a faint flickering from down the lane, like a distant candle. The flickering comes from one of the, from the one street lamp still intact on Candle Lane, kept alight by a continual flame spell. A warehouse is directly across the street from the lamp, which illuminates a black winged snake painted above the door's handle. And so that's what you guys see when you are... Uh, let me zoom out here. You guys should all have limited vision, correct? Yeah. Oh, for sure. 
Okay. Yeah. So you guys can now you approach the street. Yep. You guys walked. Yep. Here, let me get. Uh, we're not sure if he is here or not, so I assume no. She has the best dark vision. She has like 120 feet of dark vision. <laughs> Whole damn fucking so, map would be here if she showed up one night. Who's, who's going to be taking points? You guys, whenever we travel as a group, I always want you guys to let me know who's going to be taking point and who's going to be following and stuff like that. Does Zar still have level one drunk? Mm, it's been about 20 minutes, so yeah. He I probably I wanna use... tries to take point. <laughs> I want to use my like limited street smarts to try and figure out like if this place that we're going to, based on the size of it, is like a, a guild type area where like lots of people are coming and going and we could slip in easily disguised as these people or, or is it more like uh, we're going to need a better cover story because they it's, know everybody who's coming into this building. As you look down the street here, so, uh, so you guys looking down over yonder, okay? As you guys look, that's where the, uh, the, there's, there's a candle here on each, like, lane. This technically is, candle lane wraps around, but the, uh, the, over here is where you guys see some of the warehouse. So if you move very slightly forward, it's safe to move forward very slightly. You'd be able to see that there's, you're getting, oh, you know what? I guess on your view, it's just going to look like black for now. That's the corner of the building right there. Like right here is the corner of one of the warehouses. And so as you guys move down the street, you see that this this place is kind of spooky looking. It's uh, nobody's on the street at all. Nobody's walking down it. Um, you hear some sounds of some some cats getting in a fight down the in the alley, you know, maybe down this narrow little crack that Can't no point. maybe only a cobalt could fit down, but mm, it's not really an alley. There's this these buildings over here. He's tightly, like I said, it's tightly packed. The buildings are so close together that sunlight can't even get down to the street during the daytime. And it's, it does not look like there's this busy at all. Herc. Looks like it's spooky and deserted. All right. Eerily quiet, uh, you could say. Mako, like maybe there should be some can, noises. If you think you can handle this, Mago, maybe you should take the lead and do all the talking. Otherwise, I think... You should maybe try and find the way to break Sure, I love something. to talk, Herc. What do you want me to say? <laughs> sure, send the least stealthy person in the head of the group. <laughs> uh, I just tried, tried to blend in, man. Use, use some context clues. Logical I mean, thinking. Ah, uh, oh, yes, you mean like this? And I cast Minor Illusion, do the thing, and be like, they'll never even know I'm... Not one of them, and I kind of like say it like not in a super loud tone, you know, but just kind of like normal tone, trying to match uh, Herc. Okay, <laughs> does that mean that Herc no longer has his wing snake symbol then? Oh, I didn't. I thought uh, Mako Her casted that on himself. Oh, he, he did it on himself. Oh, okay. I thought he was. On yeah, you. I did okay. it on myself. I yeah. can cast it on Herc. I can cast it on anyone. Okay, you can only do one illusion at once, right? The, yeah, I can right. only do one illusion, so one person can have it. That's the, that's the okay. kicker. All right. Yeah. So, what does your illusion look like? It's gonna try to look like the uh, snake Zemitarum symbol to make it look like that we're uh, a part of them, essentially, a part of these zealots. Okay. So, what do you, based off of that, what you know, how do you want your disguise to look? Uh, it's just gonna be a tattoo. Okay. okay, so that's it? Just a tattoo? Yeah, that's all I can do. I can't, okay. like, disguise myself and make myself look like uh, someone else. I don't have that ability. I can make yeah. myself have, like, a tattoo or something. Right, if like, it's static. Like, fish I, tattooed. I can you, yeah. can you yeah. tattoo a fish? I need to Google yeah. this. Yeah, you can. So, like, like uh, that's a great example when he's talking about it because it's a static image that can't move. So, it's like, if he moves his arm, you know, that that's okay. If you were to say, for example, cast, like, a cloak, it wouldn't work very well because it wouldn't really move. It wouldn't billow. It wouldn't, it would be very obvious, like, unless he was perfectly still that he's wearing the cloak. But I still want to ask because perhaps when you're not moving, you know, you wanted to wear something else. But the tattoo uh, is perfectly fine. And it looks, yeah. uh, and um, so you show the, uh, my question for you is, Herc got uh, the calling card for Davil earlier, which has the winged snake on it. And that is the Doom Raiders logo. So do you want to have the Doom Raiders version of the winged snake, or do you want to have a regular winged snake on it? Well, uh, didn't, didn't you say that their version is like, it's coming out of a skull or something like yes, that? Yes, it's coming out of a lich's skull. 
Oh, you gotta... That's the Doom Raiders version? Yep. And technically, yeah. you haven't seen the regular Wing Snake logo, but uh, it's just, it's, it, you know, you would know that it's like the same, but just without it. So you could oh, just. Oh, the Doom Raiders version has the skull. Yes. Yeah, because the skull is of a lich, okay. and the lich has a doom, and they raid the, the, the dooms of the liches. Right. In case that helps you remember. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I know what a doom is if you're describing it as a noun. It's like a layer of the lich. So you would know that liches are very hard to uh, take down, and they raid down the the they they go right down, knocking down their their Looks layer. Like we should probably try to find this first and then yeah. attach this problem and make yeah. it as, make it as good as possible, uh, you guys. So uh, I think we should explore up ahead, see if we can find it, and then uh, let me know, and I'll uh, cast it. Sounds so good. you're not I, casting for now. Uh, no, not get sneaking. Yet. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna sneak around and just kind of like walk like regular. What is uh? What is somewhere. Dixon doing in this situation? Uh, I'm. I feel like I. I'm a good sneak. Okay. That I can like uh, kind of be a scout for the for the group. You're small, yeah. So is Zar. Yeah. Zar is also very small and very dexterous and so very stealthy. Talk, though. He would have disadvantage on his stealth, but uh, he's also got like 20 for his thing, so. <laughs> Look. You guys don't play it out. I don't give a shit. I'm just letting everybody know. I don't know if everybody knows everybody else's stats and stuff, you know? Yeah, I, I appreciate I appreciate the I appreciate the, the promotion here, but uh, Zar is a little drunk. He's a little, you know, cloaked out. Oh. Um, <laughs> I think uh, it's best for him to just hang on to his shovel and follow the leader. Which is going to be who? Mako or Dixon? Who's Great taking question. point? You guys work it out. So Herc suggested Mako and then Dixon spoke up and said, what? I mean, I'm like sneaky, but I don't really have the dark vision that the other players have, so. I don't have mm -hmm. dark vision either. Right. So these are the two dark vision boys right here. I don't know if you guys, oh, you can't say it. You guys both have dark vision and you guys both don't. So on the maps, this is reflected. We're using dynamic lighting. So literally what you see is what you get. Like Herc and Zar can see farther than you guys. Yeah. Really? Like, um, I, th I think they can see to about right, right there. Right. Herc. Mm -hmm. Accurate. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, you guys can only see about that far. Like you that. should take point oh, really? Herc, right? with yeah. your vision and see if you can uh, spot the symbol. You I'll take the ass and see if people are following. Yeah, us. and then just uh, let me know and I'll and allow me to see it and uh, I'll cast a spell by getting closer. Sounds good. Yeah, I can see. Yeah, are you casting guidance on him or something? What would you say? No, I'm not casting anything. I'm talking about I'll cast Minor Illusion once he sees it because he has good dark vision and Zar's drunk right now, so Zar's not going <laughs> to... Yeah, it's interesting because yeah. you know, I, I would say that very soon it's going to wear off. You know, like he, it's not like he's... Um, you know, it's not like it's going to last like the whole night, probably you know, another hour or so you'll be fine. I'm just but, saying... No, I'm letting you guys know just from the perspective like in the yeah. future for when you're trying to strategize, like it's probably not going to last that long. I mean, but it is like a 20 minute walk to get here. So, you know, he's still a little you bit You don't drunk. always have to treat Zara as drunk just because I'm the guy mm -hmm. in charge of him. And if you guys, if this makes it complicated, it doesn't have to be drunk. I was just doing it because it would be cool. But, you know, whatever. It's fine. I I'm thought cool it would be cool that. too. Yeah, yeah, I'm enjoying it. Cool. <laughs> so All right, I. so Zara's going to take point then? <laughs> I thought Herc was going to take point, but yeah, whatever. Oh, goes. Herc's going to take point? Okay, Herc, are you, are you taking point? Herc should take point. Man with hit point damage should take point. Okay, so guys, organize yourself as Herc. You, Herc, you can go ahead and start moving down the street. <laughs> All right. Are you sneaking? Uh, I am. Are can you sprinting? I be are you sneaking without. Cartwheeling? visually looking like I'm like da, 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 da. like I want to try and sneak as in blend in like I belong here like I'm uh, that would be a performance the check then would not be a stealth okay. check yeah because oh, you're, yeah. you you can either sneak oh, or not sneak you know so like when people are like yeah I'm cautious <laughs> and I'm not quite sneaking 
but I'm making sure I don't step on branches and shit. But you know, like <laughs> I'm not sneaking per se, but I'm like, being cautious. Ask, it's like yeah. you can I know? ask how much can he blend in with a small lizard, a giant fish, and a hobbit following him? <laughs> What's a hobbit? No. It's pretty easy. I just got to act like I don't know you guys. Yeah. As far as I know, you guys are stalking me. You could also go ahead of them yeah. and then just signal them or something if you don't want to all have to stick like glue. It's up to you. Yeah. yeah okay, so you, I, so I think they should just out. keep me on the edge of their vision range and then. We'll, all right, tell we'll them in, in character. Basically, when you guys formulate a plan, then just say down in character and then we'll you can execute your plan that way. All right, I'm well, going to. I'm going to sneak down there, pretend like I belong, where on this creepy, creepy side street here that nobody should ever go down. If I find something, I'll I'll wave you guys over or give you a little symbol, signal or hand signal of some sort, uh, and then you guys can come join me. Um, I'll find that symbol for you, and then uh, do you guys want to knock on the door? Should we try and break in? What do you knock feel? On the door. You want me to knock? I'm gonna let you knock on the door. Okay. I'll, I'll find you the symbol that you can magic up for yourself. You got it. Who's knocking? Mako. Mako will knock. He'll, he's gonna go and knock on the Zenitars from the door. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm gonna stand okay far with behind. This. Hey, give me a performance now, check as you walk down the street. Oh, sorry, go ahead, guys, keep going. Now, w yeah. when he does go to knock on the door, that's when I'm gonna go into stealth mode and roll a stealth check and try. And knock. I'll let you. I'll, I'll let you know right now with your dark vision, Herc. You do not see a door anywhere along this area. Okay. Um. Yeah. All right. So I'll do my uh performance to. Uh, try and blend in. I'm going to go ahead and use my inspiration for that. Uh, okay. You can do it in post if you'd like. Oh, you already rolled it. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, nat 20. Yeah, you look like you fucking own the place. Like, you have that Zentar. You know, kind of that, that with your background being a Xanathar thug back in the day before you became your gladiator self. You know how to carry yourself in these kind of streets. You're like, yeah, you just walk a little bit like this. And you show the guys, and I'm sure they're watching. So if you want to, go ahead and saunter down the street. You look like you cool. you belong here. Saunter, baby. And then uh, while I'm walking, do you want me to do like an investigation or something to like look I'll for I'll describe to you what of... you see. Okay. Uh, I'll let you know. If you're looking for something in particular, you'll need an investigation check. Like you're like, I look for a door. I look for whatever. You'll need an investigation I check. I think I'm that. looking for like, um, uh, I don't know how to say it, but like, uh, like, markings on the wall that would be like secret code for like here's a location of a thing um it looks like it looks like people, just like thieves would use or whatever it looks like a simple warehouse from you can tell on the outside exterior but nothing really remarkable about it doesn't look like it's very well maintained compared to the other shops but it's very strange that as you move down you notice that it, the their only ever burning candle is across the street from it um which if you, as you start to move down you notice that's where that ever burning lamp is is directly across from this warehouse so very nondescript but interestingly enough the only place that's not smashed with the ever burning candle like everywhere else in the city is has ever burning candles this only has one ever burning candle on the whole lane and it's right across from this warehouse there's a little sus you know that's like hmm why would there why would only be that person be lit and uh what else are you looking for i can't remember your question uh just like uh, markings that people would leave to like oh, yeah. notify of like secret caches or like secret you, entrance or something like that. Yeah, you don't know if thieves can't, right? Does Zar? I don't think Zar knows either, not. right? Thieves nothing. Know. Nothing you would know from like that would be like a thieves I think can't thieves kind can of is market. Like a first level uh, rogue thing. Uh, yeah, I can't I remember if you got that first my... or second level. I don't. I don't, I don't feel like I need to though. understand what the symbol is, but like if I see a scratching that looks like. Well, that's the thing, though, is design. I you would be like, yeah. Well, well I'm like, telling. I have thieves can't. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm I think you should have thieves can. Yeah. Say so it. That's what I. That's what I thought. So it sounds a lot like you're thinking of thieves can't because, like, if you you wouldn't you might see a scratch, but you don't know there's scratches and shit everywhere. There's stuff all over the place. So you would need to know, like, a rogue would need to be able to see it to know. Oh, that's code for this. Yeah. I don't know why the wiki dot's not right. working, but I'll believe you guys. I'm pretty sure it's the first. I thought it was first level as well. I couldn't remember if it was second level. Yeah, uh, no, I think no, it's no, first level. I'm pretty chat. sure it's the first level. Yeah, I, 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 I think chat. we're right. I, I think we're right. Okay, cool. 
Oh yeah, you got it. Yeah, it's right on your sheet. He's okay, got cool. it in chat. So. So it's a secret missile. So yeah, that, so it's like a, a jargon, but there's also other things like hand signals and also like symbols, simple messages and stuff like that. So yeah. as you mark down, you probably so. In that case, if you're looking for that kind of stuff, if you want to look for markings and stuff like that with Czar helping you, then you can do that with like an advantage to look for um, some markings. So it could be Herc's role, but I could give you advantage if Czar's helping. And I cast Guidance. Okay. <laughs> Man, it was what's the range move. on Guidance? 60 feet? No, I'm going to go the, touch her on the back. Is it is it based off of it's touch? Okay. Yeah, it's based upon touch. Okay, I'm just well, making sure because you guys watching us right now. Cause. Because like you, I'm just making sure because if you guys are trying to sneak around this place and you have to be next to him, it's important, you know, for like stealth reasons and stuff. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you cast that, and did you already do the roll, Herc? I did not. Let's oh, okay. let's let's fire it up. Investigation. Yep. With advantage, baby. With advantage. Before die. Plus D4. Yep, plus a D4. All yeah. right, 19. <laughs> so the one was uh, Mako's, <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What was your final, 18? 19. 19. Yeah, as you go down there, you see that there's um, certain indications. that You see that there's like um, allusions to snakes and things like that where they're pointing. And the wing you know that like you see these scratch patterns that look like a wing and the way that the wing points, you know, with thieves can't means that is the direction that you need to go. If you want to find like a, uh, what's it called? Not a warehouse, a, like a supply depot, I guess like a cache. Yeah. I mean, I don't There's think like I would know for that. that. I think I, I think the, the wing dry snake or whatever would like catch my eye and I'd like, so I guess what I'm saying out. is that you have Herc, you have uh, Zar with you, and yeah. you can say, "Hey, do you see anything?" And you guys both looking around together, he can point stuff out to you, and you have your dark vision, so you. Oh, well, he does too. But yeah, together you guys are able to see some markings, and they do point down here, and it seems like there's there's like some things that allude to boxes and like a wing pointing towards you know where you need to go to find those boxes. So it's 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 alluding to a supply warehouse. Like a weapons cache, or maybe a, a supply cache, or like stolen goods, or like whatever, whatever rogues might use them for. Lord, I think I found something. It's this uh, the symbol over here. Let me okay. Take a look. It's like you know they're here, and in the, on the walls there's a couple different. You can't miss them if you know thieves can't. So it looks we're, like uh, we're a basically snake at target. With wings, then. <laughs> What'd you say? It looks like a snake with wings then with these symbols that they recognize. Yeah, but the wings are pointing like it's a one wing pointing one way and things like that. Yeah, so it's alluding to it's the specific uh, Thieves Can't version, the dialect, so, so to speak, of the Zentarum. Okay. It does look like this I is a Zentarum I know doesn't area. understand, but I'm just trying to understand. Yep. Okay. It, it's definitely a Zentarum Thieves Can't. All right. You guys are definitely in the right place. What would you like to do, Herc? Oh, there's there's your symbol. Let's let's find the entrance to this place and get inside. Yeah. So as you look towards this, this is the part of the building as well. Um, this is the street where there's the ever burning candle. Um, the candle is down here, which I think some of you can see. I think her can I see. I can see it. Yeah. This one here. Can everyone see that candle? I think they can because I think I, I can't I see the candle, but I can see like an outline nearby the candle. Ah, so okay. That's fair. So you guys are literally seeing what you can see. Your characters can see then. Yeah. So her, can you can see that, but they can't. Just remember, they can't see that. Far okay, now I can see it. If I move my character right here, I could see it. <laughs> yeah, but now you're taking point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, yeah. did somebody I'm tell us that, that there was going to be a ever burning candle as like a signifier of some sort? Nope. Uh, just uh, candle lane. It's known for its one, one candle. Like there's only one real good burning, uh, flickering, and that's from that that light right there. That's where it gets its name, Candle Lane. That's a strange way to name a lane. I don't That's think it was always strange. called Candle Lane. Part of me really wants to put it out just for the fun. Right? What are you <laughs> going to call the street then, assholes? I could snuff that out if you want. <laughs> it's a light source. It's your only light source. Um, I like light. 
Is it? Because <laughs> uh, like I, I see lanterns here too. Do those not exist? Those are like candles. They're not ever burning lamps. I just put them so you guys could okay. see a little bit around here. It's not totally dark. Like this one is not, it's part of the map, but um, from the lore, it's actually not supposed to be there. So okay. that's why it's not, it's it's not a light source. It should be like pitch black where we are. Right here, it, should, it is. Yeah, you guys are dark right there. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right, uh, I guess I will, um, I'm going to walk along this wall here. And I'm just going to like yep. run my fingers along it and hope that I can feel for like a door or something. Uh, you don't, but as you examine the building, you notice that this place is a two-story building. It's a weird design, though, because it's on a slope. The street runs from, if you're going from right to left on this map, it's a downward, uh, it's a uh, upward slope. So as you walk up the street, you walk uphill. And as you're in this portion, you notice that this is actually the second story to the building right here. This, this square-shaped kind of structure that you can't see the inside of right now. But it looks like that is a, the second level of the warehouse. And then uh, what you just walk past over here, which you can't really see either, is that is kind of almost, almost think of it like a basement level, but it's actually the first level. So there doesn't seem to be any entrance here. But if there was, you could just walk in on the street level over here. And then as it slopes up on this side over here, you can actually easily access the second story, uh, which is this thing right here. But so, so far, this is all you can see is just the second story and then... That the, b below, as you were walking up the street, this was the the story that you had access to. So it slopes up. What kind of Willy Wonka bullshit is this? <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> it's a weird map layout, actually, to be honest with you. Um, it took me a while to understand like, it myself. I was supposed to have, like, windows or anything on the second story. Not where you can see so far. Okay. All right. Um, it looks like there's, like, you know, like, there could have been windows here, but they're, like, cemented over. Yeah. Like there's markings, like they clearly don't want people to have access to all these areas over here. So they have patched it up, so to speak. Um, you said you're running yeah. your hands along this wall right here, right? Yeah, I'm just going to keep walking down, trying to find like anything that is like, uh, I could maybe find a way to enter here or something like that. As you do, you come upon a chain link fence that's right here. And it seems to be uh, like there needs to be like a little yard area. So this is all this and this are all on the same level. And then this is the lower level over here, right? So this is actually the second level. But to you, it's almost like climbing up on the first level of, you know, a building. It's about 10 feet up in the air or whatever. You know, it's like a, about a story to, story to climb up if you were to try to scale. This would be like, a, you know, below it. And uh, you see like, you know, there's some carts here. Um, and yeah, that's what you see as you kind of come around the corner. You also notice that right here, there is a window and it is not, um, it just looks like a regular glass window. It's not paved over like the other windows. Any light coming from inside the window? Nope. Place is totally dark. Okay. The only light you can see is from this right here. With your dark vision, everything looks dim. So it's hard to see like in the dark areas. I mean, right here, it's, it's not, this is like daylight to you. Like, and this is yeah. dark dim for everybody else but i but imagine like, if there were lights inside the building we'd see something like yep nothing peeking through the window okay place looks <laughs> abandoned the place looks clear guys let's uh it is I, I assume this is their loading bay we could probably get in through here okay. yep so if you move down a little bit herc go a little bit more like down here okay so you see right here is actually the entrance to the building is right here. There's a, there's a, nice. the place is fenced over, but there seems to be an entrance right here. Uh, the entrance does have like windows that you can, it's the main entrance. So there is like a, a you can kind of peek through the windows on the door. And then there's also a window in the second story. And then uh, give me a, give me an investigation check for this area right here. If you guys want to poke around a little bit, anybody can. I'll go ahead and cast cash in my uh, other inspiration for this. Okay. Nice. You don't have to say that till after. Oh, you did it. <laughs> 13. Yeah. Uh, you see, you notice actually right here that there seems to be a winged snake that has, is stuck to the floor with an arrow shot through it. It's on the other side of the fence. Is that all snake? Like a physical winged snake or a picture a of a snake? A literal, possibly was living and breathing like 
You recognize these to be the messengers that are used by the Zentarum as little things, and it looks like it's got an arrow shot through it, little winged snake. Does it have like a, a message attached to it? Oh, you can't tell from here, it's too dark. Um, but you do know it's like a little pigeon, they use them for sending information. Okay. Um, I, I will... I assume the gate is closed. Yes. The, the, this this place is fenced off. But mm -hmm. past the fence, you see the, the, the door to the entrance of the building. There's actually another uh, window over here. Um, that's on this level and then on the second le like the second level like one level up it seems like there's another door here this one is kind of like boarded up and not very well maintained this one seems to be um in better shape okay let me uh let me climb up over the fence real quick and hop down on the other side sure and you have enough time to do that um don't need to do a athletics check you so you manage to do that but i do need to, you to do like a stealth check because that may have made noise it's going to be oh, 11. Heavy armor. Yeah, you managed to kind of do the, 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 scent, the fence itself. You're being very aware of it, but it's not a very strong fence. It's a little bit flimsy. So kind of as you go over it, it starts to kind of sway a little bit and bend. And as you do that, you kind of pop down. And as you do, your armor clinks a little bit. I try to make myself as small as possible. <laughs> like, look around like, did anybody hear that? Uh, doesn't seem to have uh, triggered anything. Seems to be okay. I mean, hey. Nothing's happened yet. All right. Must be doing good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reach out and Her, pick up the snake. What are you snake. doing? How's, how's everybody else doing while he's doing all this stuff? I mean, yeah, he I, just know, kinda I don't just, know what's happening. If you guys don't want Herc to climb over the fence and do shit on his own, let, let you guys speak up. You know, like to say something. That's well, let what me know. I was about to say. I'm like, Herc, what are you doing? My guy goes sucks. around the fence. Are you guys like trying to be no, stealthy here too? It. Or are you just standing around? No, I'm trying to walk over by the light. Like I'm like diverting my path from Herc, and I'm. All right, so you're to, standing like, directly in the light. Uh, Zara, are you standing? Where are you standing? Right there. I'm at the gate. Both you and Zara, Dixon's still in the darkness. Um, you guys are both fully exposed in the light right now. Oh, well, I might. I'm gonna go right here. So basically, in this in this instance, you would you can't like if you were trying to do like a stealth check. It wouldn't work very well because you're in broad daylight, you know, like in ever burning light. Yep. But, yep. I know Dixon kind of like, scooted over, but what's Dixon doing there? How do you he, get there? Is there a fence there? I was, I don't know. I was trying to be in the shadows. I wasn't sure. I uh, can't see anything. So I'm just like trying to. Oh, you don't have vision? I can't see much. <laughs> He's blind as fuck. Do you have dark vision? Yeah. You should have 10 feet of vision. Let me see. I'm trying to I, bring I up your token. I can see like a small halo around me and then like this candle. That's all I can see too, man. Because <laughs> we don't have dark vision. It's but you should weird. be able to see right here that there's a there's a fence that is right along here that is on the map. I can barely make it out. <laughs> you guys zoom oh, yeah, in. It's out right here. Aesthetically, that's a very thin fence. Yeah, it's a very thin fence. What do you guys want, man? That's, that's the fence. You know, it's right there. You can, yeah, you can literally see it. Maybe yeah. I can kind it's, of it's, see it's, it. It's, it's dark. You know, you want to glow in with a neon fence here, you know? It's a, it's a, it's a dark of, fence. It was a, yeah. More I'm just letting you know that, uh, yeah, you went past the fence there. Yeah. So just let me know what you're doing. So I, I did not hop the fence. I'm just like being okay. in the dark next to the fence. Here, so you're kind of hiding? Kind of, yeah. Just uh, being, being a little stealth. If you want to roll for stealth, you can do that. Otherwise, you would technically not be, if you're not intentionally sneaking, uh, you can roll me a stealth check and um, just make it sure because these guys can't because they're in the light, but Herc can because he's outside of it. It's kind of designed in a way so that, you know, the light goes up out, up to the fence and then it gets dimmer and then it's completely dark everywhere else. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll take that first roll there for 20. And uh, so you're very stealthy again. You're nailing all these stealth checks. You're just t kind of tucked to the corner and you're waiting. All right, so uh, Zara, what are you doing? I I saw Herc climbing, and I'm just kind of like, "Why are you climbing, buddy?" <laughs> I think Mako's doing the Good. same. So you guys are both like, "Hey, what are you guys doing?" Right? Yeah, I'm thinking I might climb. I'm gonna climb. Okay, you I'm climb over the him. fence. You you follow him. Also, give me a stealth check as well. At disadvantage. Oh, 
with disadvantage? Mm -hmm. We can make it so. I mean, we can make it not so bad when you're drunk. I mean, disadvantage is pretty hardcore. Maybe just make a negative on it or something. You guys want to like roll a subtract a d4? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Maybe just do a, a, a minor modifier, like a negative four. Subtract. Yeah. So let's take four away from that, or, or three away from that, and that's a twenty-four. So you will manage to <laughs> adroitly I'm a fucking ghost. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you do have a twenty on your. Stealth, so on your decks, and you do I have. Should be doing stealth a little bit more. Huh? Hey, it's he almost like you should be the stealthy guy. Stealth. Yeah, stealth. I know. He's That's got double. Insane, he's got double proficiency because he's a thief. I'm fucking wasted. <laughs> <laughs> Destroying you in stealth, Turk. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll in say um, I'm not a stealthy guy. I'm a tank. <laughs> So you managed to adroitly uh, climb over this fence without a sound, and you are... Can you move there, or is it stopping you? I can move. Okay, yeah. I wasn't sure. Okay, cool. Because there are barriers, like you guys can't move through the walls here, for example. Well, I think I left the fence open. What does that up? Yeah, oh, try yeah, it. I'm pretty curious cool. about this here. I'm pretty curious about this here window. I'm, I'm gonna Did go you to move? The window. Can I go to the window? Can I go to the window? It's revealing shit. Yep, go ahead. Which one? Like see, the, okay. the windows that are on the door or the window that's on the second floor? The window that's right here on the first floor. So you're going to walk straight I up to the it. right in front of the warehouse where the main entrance is? I'm going to try to sneak to it, you know, right? Be stealthy yeah. about it. Okay. Keyword. Cool. Yeah, that's a good keyword. Yep, you managed uh, to go up to there. Doesn't seem to raise any alarm. You can try to look in okay. through the foggy glass window to the <laughs> bottom level if you'd like. So, I yeah, think I you see a lot of see a lot of disgusting bullshit. Okay. That's really the best way I can describe this. Sounds good. Empty. <laughs> disgusting. Empty so disgusting. much to clean this place. Cool. All right, now, are you over here? Because like on my map, it shows you down here. I thought in order That's to see... I, I went to the window. You're right here? Oh, yeah, but then on the doors... The on the doors, you might be able to uh, see through as well. Might be easier. Nope. Go up. Nope. No. Okay, I know I didn't add windows to the door. Then. I thought I did, I but maybe window. not. Okay. The window's valid, yeah. It's it's it, through the shutters you managed to kind of see, but you, it's not a great angle because it's all boarded up and stuff. But I think you should be able to see yeah. like around this area, right? But not over see, here. Yeah, you're here. clicking. No, yeah, you're perfect with your clicks. Cool. Oh, man, I love to be perfect with my clicks. All right, so that's what you see? Mm-hmm. All right. I see what do you nothing. guys want to do? I, I can't even give information besides there's nothing on this side of the room. But it does look like a disgusting warehouse. Like they really need to up their organizational game. Okay. <laughs> These zealots clearly do not have like be clean in their commandments. Yo, if we find out that the like big villain of this arc is Jeff Bezos, I'm be very happy. <laughs> it's an Amazon warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> all right what do you guys want to do we got like we got to wrap it up here we're almost at the end of the session uh i'm waiting on them i'm just gonna send the light yeah i'm uh I'm... mako doesn't know what's up he's just chilling well you can end I here have... but i think it's not very exciting so i'm <laughs> gonna give the viewers at home something. <laughs> <It's not. laughs> i'm gonna break through the window and start shouting <laughs> Let me ask you guys something. Is it okay if we go a little longer tonight, or does every do, do you have to get up early tomorrow, man? Are you? I do have to get up early tomorrow, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, fuck it. Let's. I'll do ten mi more minutes. All right. I mean, I feel I feel like our next steps are going to be entering the warehouse, and then we can yeah, just call it there. We, yeah, let's just enter the warehouse and call it there. Sound good? You can certainly try. <laughs> We're going to enter I'm, uh, the warehouse and end it there. Yeah, let's do yeah. it. I do All want right. to check out this this dead snake, though. Okay. Um, the snake is yeah, right in I'm, front of you. It's It actually landed right on one of these little wagons, and it seems like it got shot through with an arrow, and it's stuck into the wagon, the arrow, right through its body. It's a little tiny snake body. Yeah, I wanna, I'm want to. i going to scoop it up and investigate it a little bit, see if I can like okay. deduce anything from it, like maybe... You notice who this arrow might belong to if there's like a specific clan that uses certain types of arrows or something like that, maybe. Sure. Yeah. Uh, even without investigation check, you can clearly see this is like, you know, this is a 
uh, messenger uh, that they use, like a little carrying pigeon. And it has a little scroll attached to it. And it has, looks like a little message attached to it. Yeah, let me pick that up and unfurl it. You unfurl the scroll, and on there is hastily written in a quick little chicken scratch. Seems someone seemed to write, uh, Erstel, need immediate backup. And then it sort of slants off, kind of, it's, it's almost like indiscernible uh, after that. And they tried writing some stuff, and they seem to have quickly scrolled it and sent it attached to this. Hmm. No, no signature or seal or anything like that. It looks like there's a bit of blood on there. There's like a, like a little couple drops of blood that have been smeared along with the ink that was not even finished drying when they wrote it. So it's indiscernible other than Erstel would need immediate backup. And I'm assuming because I'm reading the scroll, it did not reach its intended target. It did not. Okay. Right. Uh, well, this and if you recall, much. Erstel Floxen was the guy that Davil Starsong from the Doom Raiders told you guys about as one of the leaders, the new leader of the Zent Zealots. Mm -hmm. The so make, somebody... make Zent Arm great again guy. Someone seemed to have been contacting oh. Erstel. It says, Erstel, need immediate backup. Some blood, some smears, trying... some ink to figure out the the location of this this messenger snake got shot down was it coming or going can i tell that from like the way it was it's facing laying? it's facing you so it was leaving it was leaving okay and then immediately got shot down are there other arrows around here it just like, was there a battle that happened in this area doesn't look like there's a signs of any kind of scuffle on the uh, exterior, but it does look like okay. uh, whatever shot this down just was, uh, was a crossbow, arrow, bolt. Can I can I talk to Herc real quick? Can I yell across sure. the thing? You can whisper. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just gonna yell it. I see a headless corpse in here. Uh boy. Does it look like somebody that might be named Erstel? <laughs> I can't make out the name tag. Okay. <laughs> Are you talking about this, sir? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to like... He walk does, up to he the does see a dead body in there. I'm going to walk up to the fence and be like, guys, I think this place is abandoned. Come on in. Let's check it out. <laughs> I don't believe you. I'm scared. <laughs> it's okay. You can hold my hand. <laughs> Mako holds Herc's hand. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you have to get on this side of the fence to hold okay. my hand. <laughs> okay, Mako climbs the fence <laughs> to go over Give the me a stealth check. Like a stealth check. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Nine. I'm use one of my inspiration. Alrighty then. Yeah, it's cool. So that's one of the two. So both you and Herc are down to one out of two. Yeah, that's fine. No, I use both of mine. I'm, I'm down to zero. Okay. So you managed to climb over the fence without making much noise. You'd make a little bit, but definitely better than what Herc did. I go on her, hold Herc's hand and say, okay, man, I'm scared. It's, are you afraid of the dark, Mako? All right. I guess yes, I am. Uh, I'm a, not like super, Dixon. not like... A, Land yep. dark, but ocean dark is like okay, but like land dark is so creepy and weird. What's so creepy and weird about land dark that ocean dark does not provide? There's people hiding around in them. Well, you guys whispering on this. Ocean dark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, ocean dark. There's not really a lot down there. I thought there were always bigger fish in the sea. Isn't that what everybody says? There always is a bigger fish. But a lot of them can't handle the big pressures, and me being tiny, I'm not really much of a meal, if you get what I'm saying. You're eight feet tall. <laughs> I'm not eight feet tall. What do you mean? My character's a... Uh, he's a big, he's a big girthy foot. fish, but he's, you know, he's not as tall as her, yeah. for example. Yeah. But he's girthy. Uh, he's a big How boy. tall is he? He's, he's a big girthy fish, but he's, you know... I'm like uh, less than six foot. He's big for his You're race. You're five foot tall fish. No, I'm like 5'11". Like right. He's a big he's a big fish for his people size. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just like you. You're a six yeah, I'm not like much of like fish. a tasty snack for like, you know, 
bigger fish in the sea, so I'm like a bit is, scared. You is know? Dixon climbing over the fence as they do this, by the way? Yes. You don't need a stealth check because you already passed it earlier, um, so you're good. You, okay. you managed to also... Actually, there's a little... You notice there's a little bit of give in the fence. You can just kind of easily slide in and slide out. And with right, your so, small size. Where are we going? Uh, Zar, you got some lockpicks on you, buddy? Uh, yeah. I think you can take care of that door. Probably. Tinker tools work for lockpicks, right? No, you need thieves tools. You need uh, thieves yeah. tools? Oh, I got uh, thieves tools. I got thieves tools. Oh, yeah, I did give you thieves tools, I think. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'll thieves tools. Okay. All right, give me. Which so attribute? you're gonna try. To, you're gonna try to pick the the front door's lock, right? A little dexterity, right? Yeah, and just keep in mind when you guys fail to. Okay, if you guys fail to pick some pick a lock, it's like it like breaks the tools and stuff like that. You know, so it's like if you're like, oh, oh I shit. try again. You know. Well, uh, I, th- I think you, I don't. I don't think you do. I don't know what you did with the thieves' tools there, but I think you just need to do a sleight of hand check. You can sleight only do. Hand. You can only do a sleight of hand check to pick a lock if you have these tools. It's like you could be the best, most dexterous person in the world, but if you don't have tools, you can't pick a lock without the tools. The tools are just there. I don't know what you just triggered there, but you, it's definitely a sleight of hand check. Point one. Nailing it. Okay, so you manage to <laughs> click the door and you hear a nice, satisfying click. And do you want to try to open the door? I want Herc to try to open the door. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's fine. I'll I'll lead the way. That's I uh, stop Herc real fast, and I'm like, "Hold on, I'm uh, scared about this. Are you sh- are you sure there's nothing in there? I'm a bit scared. There's definitely a dead body in there. Oh I'll God! Tell you what, I am." <laughs> hoping there's something in there because we didn't come all this way for there to not be anything in there. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, Alright, he's ready to go in. I have no reason to believe that this door is a mimic, so I'm just going to push the door open <laughs> slowly. <laughs> Zara, Zara reaches out with both hands, pushes on the heavy oak doors, and as he does, I guess we'll find out next time. On Deep Water Dragon Heist. (laughs) (laughs) Hey guys. Cool. Good sesh. I'm going to go ahead and kill the stream here. If anybody is watching this, we do this every every other Thursday night at 8 o'clock. Hope you enjoy the stream and uh, make sure you give us a sub and share with friends. And uh, we'll see you next time. The wind is blowing slow and the storm is nigh. Captain Mako, the fearless fisherman, with his crew of sailors, on adventures they embark. The master angler with a rod of gold, fish and tales of wonder, his stories unfold. From water deep to distant shores, his name's known far and wide. Captain Mako, the captain of the tide.